defeat a season one champion. Standing in his way of PGF gold is the 225 pound champion, Sam Barbosa, who laid claim to the title in 2020. Meanwhile, lurking in the shadows is a highly anticipated challenger. Hunter Colvin will attempt to etch his name in the PGF history books. Will the bad guy remain undefeated in season two? Will the nice guy continue to reign supreme at 225 pounds? Or will Hunter Colvin rise from the shadows to reveal a new contender? There it, is. it all goes down. I've been doing this for life, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> on March 5th, free on YouTube. This is the PGF. I'm not, I'm not coming out of this in third place, I'll tell you that. I think it's that triangle probably again. Yeah, it's gonna be a bad place. Triangle. Nice Beautiful. gift wrap. Beautiful gift wrap to the chair stick. Body triangle. triangle. And honestly, like this is how his match with Gratian should have gone. He just didn't know. You know, it was his first match of the season, but he lost points because he could have done the exact same thing. And I guess a rear naked show, but Justin fights out of it. He's got 15 seconds. Justin doing everything he can to stop the choke. He just wants to at least take away that extra point for Elijah. He's going to do that. No extra point for Elijah. But that body triangle is still tight. Justin struggling here. <laughs> covers it covers Justin's eyes. Great jacket, looking to control, get that hand behind Justin's back. Gets a tap. Six points for Elijah. You know, and I know there's probably so many clips of me just gushing about Elijah's game, but I, I just I love it, man. That, that right there, that's something he's added, man. He's Ankle always getting to the better. leg drag. He uses that to get the armbar oh. attempt. Then he uses that to get out, but he's transitioning right into that. Leg lock that, that was a big mistake. I don't understand the leg lock because you know when you pass Kevin, he's going to do what? Go to Turtle and show you his back. I understand it. That looks so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that, Aga? He went right into he's spamming him. The leg he's lock going for that V-lock. That V-lock's tight. Oh, gets the leg lock. Well, uh, okay, so he's going to be able to draw this out. Make the pick attempt by Make Elijah. I think Elijah's gonna get it on the leg. Yeah, Elijah's already deep on that leg right now. Oh, he should have back step, but he's going for this Ashi. Kamoy's in trouble. Kamoy's in a lot of trouble. Gets the tap. Dude, Elijah is that dude. <laughs> and he says an injured Sam, too. I wonder, full strength Sam. I don't know, man. Are, is he really injured? I mean, the way he said it, it wasn't His like. His kneecap he pops. <laughs> oh, wow, he gets the ankle lock. I'm gonna say I said leg lock. Fuck. Oh. Elijah's definitely a confident, but it's like he said, you know, he realizes this is a style that might give him some trouble. And we're, I think we're seeing that just a little bit. Easily elevates the ring. Right into the oh, leg. That should be a tap right yeah. there. That's going to be interesting. Is he going to pass or get no, the finish? that heel is yeah, so exposed. He's get the finish. I hope Randy taps. Yeah. Nice entry. Here we go. So Elijah. Three. He's a much, 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 much better grappler than he's on top. Yeah, 
Mike on bottom, it looks like he's having a hard time. He just fell right into another triangle. And this oh, one's super this deep. Is deep. This is over. Mike's out. Oh, the neck and tap. Man, Elijah, that's why he's the favorite, man. He shows the rules, basically. Yeah, I think they've competed multiple times against each other. I realized it was going to be really hard to choke him, so I decided to do Samurai Roll and see what happens. He ends up getting twisted. He's playing a different game than Sam is. Sam with the truck roll. Nice little Samurai Roll right there. I love the Samurai Roll. That was one of my, when I first saw the Samurai Roll, that was a move I had to have in my game. Sam looking for a twister. We'll put him back into his truck. Well, and Justin was able to take away the extra Justin, point. Justin put himself in the twister. Going deep on that twister, gets the tap. Oh, the first twister in season two. Burr, Sam burr, burr, burr. Man, he's waiting. He wants Jake to come up and try and grab that leg. He wants that guillotine. You can see that arm is trying for a guillotine or a dart. Other than Hunter Colvin, nobody's put Jake in this situation where he's just having to fight from bottom mm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Posture from head. This is where Sam's scary, though. He's got some really good chokes. We saw that neck tie against Kevin. We've seen him guillotine. We've seen the rear naked game. I mean, he's a nasty dude when he starts attacking the neck. Jake looking to slowly get up with this two-on-one. Yeah, he needs to peel and get back to his feet. Four minutes, nine seconds left. Sam doing a good job, not rushing anything. He's trying to keep Jake down. He wants to keep him in this position. He does not want Jake standing back up. Or he's going to have to play his guard again. All right, guys, remember May 21st. Make sure you're marking your calendars. Yeah. That's, that Sam takes was the back. such a good back take right there. And Sam has looked like a monster when he gets the back. Yeah, Jake was trying to look for a sit-out with that situation, but Sam felt it, took the back. Looking for a that rear body naked choke. triangle. He's trying to crush through Jake's face. He gets it a tap. Wow. Sam Barbosa. Really good match by Sam Sam's on and going after dudes. Wish it is dangerous. Yeah, he's got a lot of front headlock weapons. Setting up that vice grip, nice. I like to see that Sam's already active and, and, I mean, and he's he still not has allowing 20, He right. still has 20 seconds for points, and that looks deep. It does look deep. Kevin, though, breathing. Staying relaxed and framing. Kevin needs to keep his head out of that pocket. He cannot fall into the hole. He's still got good enough posture right here. To survive, yes, excellent. Kevin's out, and he looks like he's trying to attack that same arm that attacked his neck. And uh, this would be crazy. No Maybe a wrist lock? <sighs> oh, Kevin, though, starting to turn different colors here. Sam, though, has to abandon Oh, ship. straight arm lock by Kevin. And Kevin's in on the straight arm lock. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Kevin going all out for it. Sam is using his leg to try to keep Kevin from getting leverage on that submission and releases it. Oh, oh! Oh, I think he just popped his elbow right there. Pop Sam. Yeah, in that Americana. Ooh. Yeah, I've seen Kevin pop a few guys right there, and I think that's what it was. Kevin's so nice on Sam. And oh, Sam gets the choke, dude. You know how strong your vice grip has to be to get a tap right there. He ends up on bottom. He plays so relaxed. This is where Sam is a monster. Ooh, that's right into a tie. The darts is one of his favorite moves. He's in on that clinch right there. Gotta, gotta be wary of the darts. Making his angle. Right into it. Man, he's looking for that Japanese necktie. I've been doing a good job of. Rolling around, but it's just a he's matter of keeping time. his elbow. His head's oh. trapped. Yeah, he's <laughs> getting now deep on that. Missed the extra points, but still on the choke. Yeah, that's deep. He's gonna full guard. This is he's deep. trapped. He's gonna get that. That's a tap. There we go. Sam with the truck roll. Nice little samurai roll right there. Well, Justin was able to take away the extra Justin. point. Justin put himself in the twister. Going deep on that twister, gets the tap. The first.
at the time in my head, I was like, okay, you're the bad guy, but I'm going to show you who the real bad guy is. And I was hitting those collar ties and everything. It was a fun match. Hunter's just so comfortable in that pocket. Just a master class of passing. And there he is. He's in on the All, rolling Kimura. Already deep on that rolling Kimura. This is his move. This is where he sets everything up. Legs are free. Kamoi's in trouble. Beautiful, beautiful adjustment by Hunter. Kamoi's doing a good job trying to fight those hooks, but the body triangle's in. Yeah, this is, this is not good. Back's taken, 440 left. Oh, God, there it is. <laughs> Looks like Hunter's trying to transition. I think that was Steven's play. Just wait, it, wait out the storm and hopefully transition to an arm bar and escape during the transition. Yeah. Or, and you've seen, you've seen Hunter switch games when he feels like he's not getting the submission. And so I think we're going to see him switch from the rear naked choke, and, and especially when it starts getting near that three minute mark. Little face crush by Hunter Colvin. Yeah, he just doesn't. Yeah, there there's the transition it. right there to the arm bar. Steven uses that to try to get out. Hunter could always go back to the back, too. This is a good play to just get the person to open up. But he switches it to a triangle. Beautiful work by Hunter. And he's going to get that triangle. That is tight. In there. Tight reverse triangle from the back. Gets the finish by Hunter Colvin. Wow. Look for that Kimura. He's already in on the Kimura. Look, to, look for Hunter to roll off of this and take the back. Mike knows the deal, and he's just holding on to that foot. Mike does a good job of getting his arm free. Nice job by Big Mike right there. Megan Mike showing some pretty good defense right there, but Hunter's on a mission to get some extra points. Hunter's just overwhelming, man. Yeah, he's he's very strong and very technical, which is, is a, and has great oh, attacks. So I just whittled his way through that space. Chair sit by Hunter. Immediately into the back. He's got five seconds. Mike doing no a good job of hand point. fighting, surviving. But he's already breathing heavy. Ooh, Hunter's probably going to crank through that. Gets the tap. This is the extra points. Man, Hunter's a beast. And right on the neck with three seconds. Oh, Judo Justin on top and sits back. Not Go a good leg. idea. Oh, the bear and bowler. Terrible idea. Nice. This is not good. 40 seconds still left. This is seven. For extra points. Your back He's oh, just he neck cranking. Oh. Man, Hunter's so strong. So nice job by, like, I mean. Oh. And that's it. Ouch. Yeah, that's what looks to elevate a little bit, but. You can't not with get the knee him. Slice. It's the same thing with everybody. Takes his back and is already deep into this back control. Yeah. Kevin, Kevin can't be sloppy here. Yeah, he's got good back defense, but we'll see what Hunter's going to do. He does. Really, really nice good movement choice. right there. Yeah, but Kevin's so heavy. That's Another the thing choice. about Kevin. He is so heavy when you're trying to take the back. And and see it, man. Out. This honestly makes me feel really good about my attempts, <laughs> back back attack. attempts on, on Kevin because I know how heavy he is, like shockingly heavy uh, when you're trying to take his back. He can just find the point. Almost like Kevin got a little smile right there. I've at least, okay. I've at least thorted. <laughs> Point. This is a lot of invisible jujitsu, man. Uh, this is very cool. <laughs> man, uh, beautiful jujitsu by Kevin. I, I know it doesn't look like much, but I I'm very, very impressed, especially the way we've seen Hunter just gobble dudes up. He takes their back and it's over. Hunter's Kevin's just chilling. Hunter's resisting that armbar. He knows that the back is where it's at. Kevin's almost giving up the arm bar. Right. Oh, well, he's going for it now. So it's time to exchange, you think, for a no. break? No, I think he's trying to use that to get a triangle. Uh, Kevin, though, what defense. Okay, yeah, you're right, Joe. Looking for the rear, oh, the back triangle. But is he going to finish with the arm, or is he no, going to finish with the choke? To, oh, he, he's... Oh, oh he got exchanged to get the arm bar. it. Oh, he had plenty of time, though. <laughs> but it, would somebody... To, to happen, but... 
that's just not a safe thing to do. Both men are just, it just takes one mistake and snowballs into, into defeat. Yeah. Uh, I definitely 55 seconds. There's the setup he was looking for. There it is. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. He was looking for that the whole match. This, like I said, that's how he beat him last time. Oh, that's how he beat him last time. And there we go, the yeah. undefeated streak. I never thought oh. I'd see this day. I always said that I'm like never gonna be one of those people who like get so big and then stop taking matches from people. Like anybody who wants to have a match with me, I'll give them a match. I like challenging myself. I like giving the guys coming up their dues. Kind of seems like some of these people when they reach certain levels, they don't think about the people coming up like they did. Kind of just like they're too good for them. Block 12, son. Listen, I've been whooping his ass his whole life. He better come get it. You know what I'm saying? He's going to see this, and one of us is going to lose and hear about it at Thanksgiving for forever. So all, the video will always exist. I'm up about 10,000 wins on him, okay, as his big brother. But uh, the one on camera for everybody to watch is going to be worth a lot. So we're going <laughs> to totally scrap. Neither one of us are healthy. We both know the other one is jacked up. Expect some trash talk. It's going to be all the way fun, dude. Dude, what a douche. Oh, my God, he's such a douchebag. What else can we say about Jake Elkins besides he's a douchebag? I mean, yeah. I can't wait. Block 12 is what I came here for, in case y'all were wondering. In case the people wanted to see it, Block 12 is where it goes down. I'm going to kill Jake Elkins for sure. I can't kill him, but I'm going to... I'm gonna choke his, choke his damn neck, boy, for sure. Listen, we will be fighting to the death. Do you understand? Like, <laughs> nothing could matter more. No <laughs> amount of money is worth the opportunity to claim victory over your brother. Big, like, to maintain big brother status, or like, he just wants to be able to say he beat me. You know what I'm saying? And so, one thousand percent. What's that gonna look like at Thanksgiving if he wins? Look, dude. All of them, like, we all won state titles based off the pressure that we were delivering downhill to the other one. Like, yeah, dude, you ain't even won state yet. You know what I'm saying? Uh, our youngest brother, Marcus, literally walked off the mat, didn't say one word except uh, he, he could finally play the game because he had joined the state champ club after we had grilled him for forever. So growing up in the Elkins house was tough, and y'all are going to find out, like, who, who reigns supreme still. You know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> If you're, if, I'm, if you're still talking about what you did yesterday, it's because you've done nothing today. So, like, I'm going to always remind him of the 10,000 wins I have over him. But uh, I'll be leaving a little sore if I don't come out on top. So I'll be playing for Keith. Are you going to pull guard against your brother tomorrow? I mean, I feel like the people want to see guns ablaze and takedowns from me and my brother. But I just have to say right now that he don't want that shit, man. He don't want that shit at all, okay? Um, but since I guess since my little legs all tweaked, I'm gonna sit down and show him what that damn jujitsu is talking about. You know. You gonna make a difference? Were you gonna leg lock him or what? Uh, no. Nah, I mean, I don't really like to leg lock my brother. Um, I like to choke him. Simply put, Thanksgiving looks like I mean, like every other year, if he's got something smart to say, I'll smack him in his little mouth. You know. And if he winds up ripping, I mean, he's probably going to go for my bad leg. He's a scoundrel. He's a rascal. He's, that's his only chance is to grab my bad leg. And if he does, then he's got to look me in the eyes after we say grace, come up with one of those right there, lock eyes, and know he don't have what it takes unless it's my bad leg. But it's all good. I still love him. I still let him carry our last name poorly. But, you know, I love him to death. Well, here we go. We have uh, so a big rivalry that's been going on for 29 years. <laughs> we have Matt Elkins versus Jake Elkins, and I think, it, I think this is really going to be a good shit, bro. I've been doing this for life, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> a little bit of love, but hey, there's about to be a war. <laughs> So, I mean, Matt says he's going to say, but we've seen guys say they're going to do something. I, I just I think we're going to see wrestling at some point, and I, I don't know who has the advantage. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Both braced up. <laughs> we're in the iron <laughs> gear. <laughs> Jake with the fake sit. This is a 
exciting. Everybody's holding their breath on this yeah, one. Yeah, it is, man. It's really exciting. Matt's guards looked really good. Dude, if he did a spin around leg lock, I was like, dude, if he just underhooked and leg locked him, that'd be the most big brother move of all time. Already, already some trash talking by Matt Elkins. Ooh, that was a nice arm drag attempt. Is anybody trying to coach them? No. I think everybody's silent. Yeah, Matt's, Matt's got more jujitsu experience, but yeah, he, a good he is Eva injured. Play. It's a good daily Eva play. Oh, Beautiful guillotine entry. I mean, this is where he wants to be. Yeah, he can use this to sweep. This is bad news. Wow. Beautiful sweep. And Matt's good legs in the half guard. This is where Matt is just a monster. Just going to get... Somebody start counting them back still points. Still I had to extra points out the window, but... I don't know. We might just turn the timer off until there's a sub. <laughs> now, Jake stayed in the pocket right there and took that underhook while Matt was goofing around. I think that was a big mistake by Matt. That was, that was a good control point that he just gave up. You just trying to get punched choked right here? What's up? Boy, for keeps the boys. Jake explosion. Jake explodes out, looks for a leg lock attempt. He's like, dang, wrong leg. <laughs> he's trying to get the good one, too. Matt in on a leg lock entry. Oh, oh it's deep. It's deep, but he's rolling. Nah, he's and good. He he's, out. he's gonna clear the knee line. Lines out. And that's the thing. Jake knows if he just stands, Matt's got to sit. <laughs> Matt sits again. Matt's guard's holding up, and, and Jake's passing has been ferocious, and, and so you're really seeing how high level Matt's guard game is. Yeah, this is. Super fun match. It reminds me of like Bill Cooper and uh, Jeff Glover. Just That's a good match. anaconda oh. attempt. Beautiful entry. Oh, okay. <laughs> a nice little teeth kick to the chest. <laughs> a couple wear action by Matt Elkins. They gotta, they gotta pull up their braces. <laughs> I like that they take five. Like they look at each other and go, "Hey, let's pull up our braces." <laughs> Jake's trying to pass the weak side. I like the volume of action we're getting and, and the legitimacy of the attacks. Because they're, they're going for it. Ooh. Nice little pummel right there by Jake to win the inside position. Jake likes passing to Matt's right side. Mm -hmm. Right into a knee slice. Oh, Takes the back. Beautiful back. Tail. Oh my God, he's deep on that. He's gonna get that. The face crush. He's gonna get that. Oh my oh. God, he gets a tap. Oh. Matt Elkins slays yes. Big Brother. What a, what a back tail. Well, the fantasy is going wild right now. Fantasy is going Block 12, son. That's what I came here to do. Um, I really felt like I was going to get my brother's leg and rip it off. And just between me and you, I definitely tried to. And he wasn't playing that shit. And when we got up, I was like, oh, damn. He came for real to play, you know. Because we had had a couple moments where we were, like, talking, you know, mad to each other in front of everybody. And then we would have our quieter moments, you know, to each other. And it's like... Yeah, dude, I don't know if my knee's going to, like, make it, or I don't know if my back's going to make it. And we were just kind of being honest, like, maybe we're not going to go out here and try and kill each other. But then we got out there and got straight to it, you know? <laughs> so it was awesome, man. He, uh, yeah, he, he, he defended the leg lock really well. I thought that I got him with a leg lock, which I would have been super happy about. We've been trying to turn ourselves into no good dirty butt scooters. So if I had a leg lock, my dude, I'd have been super proud. But, yeah, I caught him slipping, dude. You slipping. <laughs> Listen, dude, uh, that's why we came. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if you want to know what we're about, it's that that was it, dude. That was awesome. Uh, 
I loved it. We we grew up doing this with each other, you know what I mean? And um, he drug me into jujitsu. Uh, in fact, I think my first day on the mats, we had like a similar kind of scuffle that that stopped the gym. Uh, dude, I love that guy. He's been my best friend, as, you know, since I can remember. And so, uh, honor to share the mats. Uh, it probably would have been dirty if I did come out with the win because I know how he does me in training. So <laughs> um, he's a uh, man. Whatever, dude. That, that's that's the way it should be, right? Like, uh, I've got a brother to do that with. A lot of people don't have a brother, but, like, find a training partner because that's, that's what jiu-jitsu is, you know what I mean? It's great. Man. I always, like, play on a single leg there, kind of, and, I mean, I thought this mug had one leg, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All of a sudden, I go to grab his leg, and he backstepped over my head, and I was like, I can't believe this just happened, you scoundrel. <laughs> with 2020 in the books, the PGF is gearing up to bring another action-packed season of high-level Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Like, oh. This season, we welcome back the bad guy, Elijah Carlton, the undefeated season one champion. Standing in his way of PGF gold is the 225-pound champion, Sam Barbosa, who laid claim to the title in 2020. Meanwhile, lurking in the shadows is a highly anticipated challenger. Hunter Colvin will attempt to etch his name in the PGF history books. Will the bad guy remain undefeated in season two? Will the nice guy continue to reign supreme at 225 pounds? Or will Hunter Colvin rise from the shadows to reveal a new contender? There it, is. it all goes down. We've been doing this for life, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> on March 5th, free on YouTube. This is the PGF. Satisfaction without the fight. A man has limits, or oh, so they say. But I never listen. It is my way. I'm gonna take what's a mine. I paid my dues. I dare you to walk a mile in these shoes. The beat in my soul just keeps getting louder. Give me some of that. person mm -hmm. but Evan improved dramatically I think thinking he's gonna last long no longer like is gonna give any kind of extra points we're not doing any points yeah. sub only so yeah the sub is the only thing that matters all of these matches will end in a submission now the super fight is EBI 
uh, is EBI format, so 10 minutes with three OT rounds. So that has a potential to be, you know, ride time, uh, a ride time based victory, but every single other match has to end in a regular old good old fashioned <laughs> submission. submission. So you never know. We may be here for a really long time or we may get out, you know, really quickly. So yeah, we'll see. But uh, what about that last guy there that's in the bracket, Kevin Primo? Yes. Yeah, so we had Kevin Primo step in for Jake Elkins. And Jake Elkins had just, he had a commitment that he could not uh, get out of. And so Jake much respect for making the tournament, and we miss you here. But we've got the Liquid Terminator, and he's back. You know, I've been training with Kevin a lot the past couple of weeks. We've been getting after it, and his cardio's there. His technique is there. I mean, he didn't train before the first, I mean, before this season. Like, he legit didn't train for a month leading up to this. Had very, very little practice time before he had to step on those PGF mats. So I'm Ryan. expecting to see a much stronger Kevin Primo, but he's going against the current season two champ Sam Sam Barbosa. Barbosa. yeah so we may see another how long was his and Joe's match it was an hour and just over an hour and 10 minutes I think it was an hour and 12 <laughs> so yeah we may see another hour long match that would be well my favorite match in the first round is Matt Elkins versus Stephen Aiken I think Stephen's really he's coming in knowing what to expect from Matt Elkins because Matt Elkins was kind of a dark horse to Stephen he didn't really know what to expect and now that they've grappled and he understands how dangerous Matt is with his front headlock game, I think we'll see a different game plan, and I expect that to be a very competitive match. Yeah, so, you know, for the viewers, it was going on, like you said. Well, every everything for the PGF was recorded in, you said, five days, right? And then it was released to us a week at a time. So, like you said, these, these competitors have had a few months off, so... They could have different strategies now. They could have uh, put some extra effort in the training room. They may have some secrets. So Yeah, and you, know, you can really prepare. I'm sure Steven's been thinking a lot about front headlock defense and how he's going to deal with Matt Elkins. But we also know Matt Elkins' his knee is much healthier than it was in the season two regular season. I mean, his first true. match, he ends up taking a tear in the LCL, and it affected him. I mean, we saw him play guard almost – the entire season. So I'll be really excited to see if we see a lot more of uh, his stand-up game tonight in this live finale. So that's what you predict? You don't you don't think he's going to sit guard this time? Um, I don't know. I mean, I definitely think he's, you know, if, if his knee's healthy, he needs to play his best game. And I think his best game starts with his wrestling and him ending up on top hunting for chokes. Yeah, I agree. But it did give him an opportunity to improve his guard. So if he had to fall back on it, then it's a lot better than it was. Yeah, so. yeah we definitely found out Matt Elkins is a legit high level. I know he's a brown belt, but that dude's got black belt level skills. And he's a really, really, really good jujitsu practitioner. Now, the last match of the first round, we've got Elijah Carlton versus Kimoy Anderson. And Elijah, man, he looked phenomenal this season. He was the smallest competitor. What was funny is, you know, in season one, Elijah was one of the bigger guys. When he first came in, he was 200, 205. He was an absolute unit. He was a beast. And he, I mean, he was going against some guys that were 145, 150 pounds. So I was excited. I think the fans were excited to see how he would do against these guys that, you know, a couple of these dudes cut to 225. There were some big dudes in this season. And as I already said, he was the smallest guy. And he slayed everybody until that final match against Hunter Colvin. So I'm really interested to see how this match with Kamoy goes. Because Kamoy, though, gave Elijah one of his tougher matches. But that's not really saying a lot because, I mean, Elijah still tapped him in, in a couple of minutes. Yeah, and Elijah was one of those competitors that you were, we were talking about just a second ago being on uh, or competing on a national level. Uh, he was in Submission Underground, and he was also uh, on High Rollers. So he, he won High Rollers, right? Well, I think he won that Submission Underground yeah, match, he, too. He's, uh, He's so. been undefeated since the PGF. He's really looked sharp. He's on a roll. And he's on a roll. And Elijah and Hunter and Sam Barboza, honestly, kind of the, the three favorites tonight, all three are national level, national level talents. And we're definitely lucky to have them on the PGF stage. But right. Sam Barboza's the guy. I'm hearing a lot of chatter that he's the dark horse tonight. 
lot of people except Spam Barbosa to possibly play spoiler, whether it's just beating Elijah in the semis and getting to the finals, or maybe even possibly taking this whole thing. And Sam made it known. He was like, look, I'm waiting for that no time limit sub only. This is where I thrive. This mm -hmm. is my rule set. Right. And I've watched a lot of Sam Barboza over the past couple of years. I've watched a lot of his matches. And the longer these matches go, he becomes better and better and better. So if you can't get him out of there quick, it's going to be a really tough day uh, at the job. Right. His defense. Yes, his defense is amazing. And so I, what I, where I've seen Sam before have been the EBI uh, rule sets, and, and he will defend, defend, defend until that EBI overtime comes and then just slay people. So, yeah, it's going to be super interesting. He, he's able to – it's going to be interesting between Sam and Kevin because both of them can, uh, can uh, save their cardio, play really safe in the beginning, and then make the, make the round last and try to tire the other one out. So we'll see, we'll see what strategy they, they decide on. Is it going to be another hour and a half? We'll see. <laughs> yeah, you know, it'll be interesting to see. I, I personally am predicting that no match will go over 30 minutes. I think for okay. the most part, most of these matches will go pretty quickly. You know, they're definitely going to be competitive matches. Um, I think obviously the biggest – difference in skill is between Hunter and Evan. I mean, Evan had a phenomenal season, and I'm super proud of, of his performances, but Hunter Cole is... <laughs> he's got, he's he's got a difficult up. first match, <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, I like to think if I'm a bet man and I got to bet, it's betting on Hunter Cole in that match. And yeah. I'm really interested, though, in, uh, again, the Matt Elkin, Stephen Aiken, and Kevin San Barboza. You know, I think uh, Elijah and Hunter, though, will be pretty clear favorites to go into the second round. All right, so that's what you're predicting. Yeah, and I definitely. But we have a super fight. So last time we had a four-man tournament, and that four-man tournament featured the likes of Sam Barboza and Jake Elkins. They met in the final to see who the 225 season two pound champion was gonna be. Tonight, we just have one super fight. So we have one of Sam Barboza's teammate, uh, teammates, Manny coming all the way from 10th Planet Jacksonville. He is a purple belt. He's been killing it. I saw him win uh, actually Stephen Aiken's little professional event. Stephen Aiken hosts a awesome tournament down there in Perry, Georgia, and Manny won that. He won, I believe the weight was under 155. Could have been I'm under not 170. Sure. I, I didn't get a chance to watch that one. One of the other. But anyways, Manny stepping up tonight. He is going against a young but savage Ethan Birmingham. And Ethan Birmingham, I've never, I have not seen footage of this, uh, of this kid yet. Um, I don't know much about him, but Brandon talks very highly. This kid's already had a couple of MMA fights. Brandon's called a couple of his, uh, of his MMA fights in Mississippi, and he's like, this kid's jiu-jitsu is super, super good. And so I'm excited to see what he brings. He trains with, um, you know, the UFC fighter. Uh, the guy that, the, yeah, the guy that wants the camo shorts. Yeah, yeah the camo shorts. Um, oh, my gosh, why am I blanking? <laughs> Bryce, Bryce Mitchell. Mitchell, there we go. Thank you, Keelan. So, yeah, <laughs> heard Keelan, the old cameraman. <laughs> but, yeah, he's a teammate uh, and training partner of Bryce Mitchell. We know Bryce's uh, jiu-jitsu is phenomenal. Amazing. So I'm excited again to see Ethan. I love the young guys, man. I think what makes the PGF super special are the white, blue, especially the blue belts. I really like seeing the blue belt performances, and I like seeing some of the younger guys. I mean, I think of season one, like Noah Randolph coming in there, him and Blake Randall both coming in there as teenagers and really taking it to some really... <laughs> Showing cool. some amazing yeah. things. Yeah, it's really taking it to some adults. And, uh, you know, you just become fans of those guys. And I, it's funny, I always kind of find myself rooting for the blue belts. <laughs> and some of the blue belt performances have been epic. So I'm, I'm expecting Ethan Birmingham to come out here tonight and put on a epic performance for us. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I, I, I'm so excited. I haven't gotten to see either one of those guys, so I'm, I'm going to see some fireworks yeah, on just know. I've rolled with Manny a few times, and Manny's a really fun roll. He's, um, you know, he, I think the last time I rolled with him, he had just gotten his purple belt. So he's a brand new purple belt, but moves really smoothly. Obviously, he's a 10th planet guy, so he's very well versed in the 10th planet system as well mm. as leg locks. In this last tournament I saw, he finished a couple of really nice inside heel hooks. So I'm going to expect he's going to be either throwing something from the 10th Planet system at Ethan or trying to hunt and get those legs. 
Yes. So while we've got a couple of minutes left, let's talk about um, these qualifiers that are coming up, if I can find the dates. And guys, make sure that you're going to um, PGF Home for any kind of information on upcoming PGF. But for season three, you're going to have to go through a qualifier. So if you win the qualifier, then you have, an, you have a certain uh, place in season three. Other competitors are going to be picked from those qualifiers, but these are the cities and the dates that are coming up. So the first one is going to be in Decatur on June 26th. The second one is in Louisville, Kentucky on July 10th. Atlanta, Georgia on August the 14th, Jacksonville, Florida, September 11th, and Austin, Texas, October 9th. So, and, and guys, like if you go to the first one, like let's say you come to Decatur and you are trying uh, your best at that qualifier and you just, that just wasn't your game, you just didn't have a good showing, then you can go and register for another one and, and try it again. So I'm, I'm really excited. I think that this is going to really bump up the PGF and and make it a different level. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to see what uh, competitors come out for the qualifiers. And the only way into season, well, there has been one guaranteed spot. So we know for sure that Elijah Carlton is in for season three at 170. And you got to think Elijah Carlton at 170 <laughs> is going to be an absolute monster to oh, deal with. And I, but I do know there's a lot of competitors out there wanting to take out the bad guy. And so I think Absolutely. we're going to see a lot of high-level competitors at these qualifiers. But just remember, there is a place for white and blue and purple belts in the PGF. And guys are going to be picked that did not win the qualifiers but just showed really well or have really cool stories or I don't know. Uh, you know exactly what Keelan and Brandon are going to be looking for, but they're going to be the one kind of making the decisions of who gets in and making those invites. So make sure you bring your A game and sign up for one of those qualifiers. Right, absolutely. We need white and blue belts because PGF, that's what makes it interesting. We have stories like Evan Stapler, and, and that was my only concern with the qualifiers was, you know, make sure that you guys are not just picking those guys that are uh, absolute animals. Like we need, we need stories. We need some drama and some, you know, some something to sink our teeth into along the way. So it's going to be interesting. We'll see. Yeah, a little trash talk never hurt anybody, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> a couple of guys have made a name for themselves and done pretty well, but. Getting ready to start the night off, again, we have Hunter versus Heaven as our first matchup. And if you remember their first match, Hunter took it back. And I've watched a lot of Hunter film. He just had a phenomenal showing at Pans. He beat Andre Porfio in the first round of the Pan Ams. And Andre is, is one of Cyborg's top black belts. He's a very, very, very good black belt. And he's, um, man, Hunter did the exact same thing, though. He did to everybody in PGF. Hunter Colvin <laughs> is a Kimura trap master. That dude gets the Kimura grip, and you just cannot get your arm back. Once he has it, he's got three or four plays that he likes to do, but almost all of his offense starts with heavy passing, lots of pressure, and a look at the Kimura. Once that Kimura is seen, he jumps on it, whether it's a rolling or diving type Kimura, or he just pins it against you, and you just just yeah. helpless. How did he finish in the pans on the back? No, he finished with the triangle choke. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he looked to take the back, switch to an arm bar, and then put in the triangle. I mean, it was his high-level black belt against a super high-level black belt. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just a phenomenal performance. And so, I, you know, I'm interested. Me and Evan game planned a little bit for this. I was trying my best to, you know, I, Evan's got a really big match next week. He's fighting for the CJJ, the Combat Jiu-Jitsu Championship at Battle Mountain. So a lot, of our, a lot of the work has really been geared towards preparing for that. But I think Evan's going to come in tonight, and at least he's trying to try and make Hunter's job as difficult as possible. I think he can. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping that it's not super fast. <laughs> I don't know. In a, in a sub only no time limit, you kind of want a couple of quick matches, though, right? Like, you don't want every match to be 25 minutes. You want to see know. highlights. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, of course, you want to see people get dunked on, but I don't know. You want to get your boy Evan dunked on? <laughs> I know, I know. Evan's my guy. I mean, I'm Evan's coach. I know. 
<laughs> but he's probably going to get dunked on. Yeah. <laughs> but getting ready to start. Next match, we've got Matt versus Stephen Aiken. The third match, we have Elijah versus Kamoy. And then the fourth match, we have Sam versus Kevin. So if you guys are just joining us, Kevin Primo is stepping in, or ste Kevin Primo. Primo. I don't know. He always gets on us for <laughs> mispronouncing Primo. his name. But yeah, Kevin uh, stepped in for Jake Elkins. So Jake Elkins couldn't be here tonight due to a, another commitment. And Kevin steps in. There is one more thing I want to say. So, unfortunately, uh, Zach Edwards, right? So, Zach yeah. Edwards, one of the guys I think everybody loved in this season of the PGF, dealing with some back injuries during the PGF. But he's been in the hospital the past week. And, uh, man, you know, things – doctors really don't know what's going on. It's definitely something to do with his heart. But they were talking about putting a pacemaker in. I think they did put I a pacemaker. I think they did. I think they already put but, one in. If you're interested in possibly reaching out and helping, there is a GoFundMe that you can find on his Instagram. It's underneath his stories in his little bio. Backcountry leg locks, Back right? Backcountry leg locks, yeah. And just go there and donate whatever you can. It's definitely a cause worth worthy of yeah, giving to. Yeah, he's one of ours. Yeah, he is, man. He's, he's PGF alumni. And just the fact that he had this underlying health condition going on and he finished 15 matches against 15 savages like it's impressive uh, i mean honestly that that's that's what a champion does exactly. like I, i've gained a ton of respect for him i mean yeah. i thought honestly he looked off all season just like he didn't look like himself he looked yeah and I, yeah well yeah he had some serious serious health issues going yeah. on at that time so definitely definitely think about him and while we're in a church Say a prayer, maybe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, man, a huge shout-out, last huge shout-out to the guys at Epic for letting us use their beautiful facility. This is just the perfect place to host a professional grappling event. Oh, the stage sure. is beautiful. The sound system, the production, everything is spot on. We are very, very lucky. Thank yes. you so much to Epic Church. We definitely appreciate your hospitality. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, have you been missing commentating? Have you missed the live commentating? Well, okay. I, well, I, well, I don't know if I missed the live commentary, but I did miss watching the PGF while it was going on. Not, not necessarily the commentating, but mm. everybody was there, and I knew what was happening, and I had to sit at home. You at least got to go to San Diego and go do some training. Yeah. I didn't even get to train. I was yeah. just sitting there like... What's yeah. happening? And yeah. then Brandon would come home and be like so excited, and I and he couldn't tell me what was happening. So he wanted it, the two of us to not know what was going on, so we could commentate and be excited when we saw it and have our first reactions recorded. Yeah, no, so. I, I definitely love live commentating. I, I prefer it. I did not. I mean, I shouldn't say I didn't like commentating after the fact because that, that was still fun too yeah but i just love the excitement of okay we're getting ready to see some live matches i know we all get to the see it outcomes, for the first time together yes the outcomes are not known nobody knows like let's see what happens and yeah. it feels cool i feel like i'm also especially when we were interacting with the chat i really feel like it's um you know, the chat is a part of us as well. You know, we get to talk to them. So definitely. we definitely miss chatting with you guys all season. I did. And I, we didn't get to do the fantasy this time either because we knew before everyone. And so if you know anything about Scaff and I, we like to uh, wager sometimes so <laughs> and see who wins. Yeah. So we were trying to talking the, the entire time. You were the uh, flock of seagulls, right? <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. your fantasy team. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, that was that was the name of my yeah, team. Yeah, my biggest mistake in season one is I didn't start fantasy because I was I don't I just didn't do. It. I was like, oh, you know, it's who cares. I know. And then you can never catch up to me. I know. I started in week three, and I started because uh, I wallow Jay and his crew, man. Those guys yeah. made me want to do fantasy. I had so much fun listening to their podcast that I was like, okay, I got to get in. Like listening to Wallow and those guys like argue about who they were gonna pick, like. It was so fun to right, watch right. that I, uh, I ended up jumping in a little too late. Wait, but you did pretty good, though. I did okay. You, I did okay. But, and to be honest, like, I, I kind of joked. I was like, oh, it started in week one. I, no, I missed the, the week. You know who, who ended up winning the fantasy was Noah Randolph. Like, Noah Randolph in season one, he had that week where he had 24 points. Right. He had a couple of makeup matches, right? Yes, and he just dominated. 
And then and you he picked wasn't, Noah. No, I no, didn't. No, you have, didn't? I did. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Like, I still wouldn't have finished in the top five even if I had started. Like, I know, but you always picked Kevin. And I then did I, always pick Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and then I wouldn't pick Kevin, and then you would beat me on points. So, yeah, we, we would do, like, week to week and be like, oh, I'll beat you on points. But I'd be like, yeah. But yeah, I'm you still, definitely had a couple I'm still, of like, really, number three. <laughs> yeah, you definitely had some really good weeks, though, for sure. So, yeah. But, yeah, that was definitely a fun thing. And, and you guys make sure that season three, that you're playing the Fantasy League, uh, that's just an extra, you know, what other tournaments are doing Fantasy Leagues? What other yeah. jiu-jitsu tournaments? Well, and we gave away $1,000. $1,000 to play Fantasy Grappling. Like, yeah. That is a first. That is a big, big, big. What if you won $1,000 on your Fantasy League? Like your baseball. Or I mean, that would be sick, dude. A thousand. I would definitely go buy a couple of ribeyes, <laughs> maybe two. <laughs> two. Some top-notch ribeyes. You would eat like fourteen. No, <laughs> two top-notch ribeyes. <laughs> two big old ribeyes. <laughs> but, man, oh, I'm excited to be here. I, I'm. So we are getting ready to start. Getting ready to start. I believe it's going to start in a couple of minutes. Again, the first match is Hunter versus Evan. And I expect once these matches to start, for them to start going pretty quickly. Okay, so... Does the first round take more or less than 30 minutes? More. I, I'm counting... I think, I think Kevin's going to be... You think <laughs> Sam think versus Kevin Kevin's going to be a... I think Kevin may go 30 minutes just on his own. Yeah, Kevin's definitely got his cardio back. But Sam's an interesting matchup for Kevin. I feel like that's a, uh, a bad matchup for Kevin in a way. Well, but, well, Sam isn't – we did see Sam a couple of times turn it up in the beginning and, and just, like, go ahead and sink in and attack. But, like we were saying before, he's used to those EBI overtimes and, you know, waiting his opponent out to get to those, those overtime rounds. But – Sam, you know, he has the capability to put Kevin away. So we're going to see, is he going to pull gonna, the trigger? Nah, I think he's going to play even slower pace. He knows he's got four hours if That's he needs That's what I'm saying, it, right? 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm more interested to see Hunter's pace because we saw Hunter come out and just, like, he would just dive on people. He would just spear them into double leg. He would just do a spear double leg and yeah. just grab the arm and rip their face or their arm off. So I'll be interested to see how he handles this no time limit. I expect him to come out really aggressively against Evan. I think he wants to push, put a statement out there that I'm here to dominate. Right. And then he's got plenty of time to rest for his next match. So whoever is, is going to into the finals is going to have three killer matches, no time limit matches. Yeah, so. I, I definitely feel like Hunter's side's just a little easier because, again, Hunter versus Evan is, again, probably the biggest skill differential Mismatch. in first-round mm -hmm. matchups. But uh, I, I feel like that whoever comes out of the right side will have earned it. I mean, those are two really good matches, and then that quarter – or, excuse me, that semifinal matchup is going to be fire, whether it is Elijah versus Sam or Elijah versus Kevin or Kamoy versus either one of those guys. It's going to be really tough to come out of that right side of the bracket. So who is, like, is Sam the dark horse? Or do you think Matt Elkins could find his way to the semifinals and even possibly finals? It's kind of weird to call Sam a dark horse when he's the champ, right? <laughs> this is true. This is true. But looking at it, who right. are the top two seeds? Who are the top it, two? Exactly. Who are the favorites? No, I agree with you. Um, Sam's amazing, I, I, but I don't think that's a mystery. So I don't know that, that he's necessarily a dark horse. Um, but, but if you had right. $1,000 to bet, all right, on two people being in the finals, you're not going to – you're going to choose Hunter and Elijah. That's what almost everybody's going to choose. I am. That's what I'm saying. Yes, so the dark horse is going to be somebody that can upset so. that. All right, PGF, how are we feeling tonight? Let's make some noise. Welcome everybody to the season finale of PGF season two. Uh, tonight, before we begin, we'd like to thank our sponsors. Our first sponsor is Matt Viper. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsor, the McDojo Podcast. We'd like to thank our sponsors, the Grappling Discourse. 
We'd like to also thank our sponsor, Scotsman Automa Automotive and Automation. We'd like to also thank www.brandon.mc.ninja. And last but not least, Dr. Cantrell. Now, guys, for our first exciting match of the night, we've got the most exciting blue belt in this tournament, Evan Stapler. Let's make some noise for Evan. Versus Hunter Coven. Make some noise for this match, guys. Oh, Joe Mudd has found himself a new job. That <laughs> was amazing. amazing. Really good opening. And we've got Evan Stapler, the most exciting blue belt in this tournament, if not in Alabama. And he's going against the man, Hunter Colvin. And they're getting right to it. And I'm really interested to see Hunter Colvin's pacing. Looking for that knee to have nice takedown by Hunter. And this is where, uh, this is where Evan doesn't want to be on bottom. I told Evan, if he ends up on bottom, he needs to find a way back to his feet a sap. He just, as a blue belt, it's really tough, right? Like you haven't uh, mastered a lot of the aspects of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And Evan is a much better top grappler than he is bottom grappler. Absolutely. Hunter's past the guard, nice knee slice. He's got an underhook and he's into mount. And you have to be disciplined with your arms here. You know Hunter wants the Kimura or he's going to look for a back take. He's looking to jack that arm up. He's using a nice underhook. Evan was incredibly difficult to finish from the arm triangle. So I wonder if Hunter will, oh, he's looking to switch off. Nice job staying on top. He's in on an arm bar. Nice. He's looking to get the finish even through the defense, but Evan does a great job. He's stacked in. You see that wide base. He's driving weight into Hunter. Mm -hmm. but this is one of Hunter's best positions. We'll see if he can kind of recover this arm bar. Yeah, Evan needs to avoid the temptation to pull out. He's starting to get that arm extended. Yeah, Hunter's Ooh, got that. And he gets the yeah, tap. Nice. Really nice right. finish by Hunter Colvin. Saul, he made that adjustment, gets the straight arm bar tap, and he's moving on. And that's a minute and 30 seconds. I mean, I think that's what, what we predicted. That's, you predicted it. <laughs> I okay, I did, I did predict it. But... Really nice work right there. Evan, man, does a great job stacking in, but that adjustment by Hunter allowed him to get the arm straight. He uncurled that spine and finished a beautiful straight arm lock. Getting ready to move into the second match. We got Matt versus Steven, and this is the match I'm most excited for. I really think this match has potential to be match of the night. I think Steven's coming in. A little salty about that match they had during the regular season. He was not expecting Matt's front headlock game to be as proficient as it was. Sometimes he, it's nice to be a little salty at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, he had a couple of, couple of months to really think about. And, you know, he knew. That's what was kind of cool is he, all of these guys knew who they were facing in the finale. And, well, unless you were Sam because he had a right. uh, late replacement in Kevin. But we're getting ready to see... Matt Elkins versus Stephen Aiken. And Matt's knee, I've trained with Matt a bunch since the uh, regular season took place, and his knee's definitely a lot healthier. Be interested to see if we see any wrestling. Um, I think if he can get the fight to the ground with him on top, he's going to be uh, obviously in his advantage. Yes, so the weight advantage here is, is definitely a factor. So, yeah, Matt does not want to let Steven on top. He does not want that pressure. Yeah, man, Steven's pressure is, it was one of... All right, coming up next, we've got a burner. We've got 10th Planet Decatur Brown Belt, Matt Elkins versus 10th Planet Black Belt from Perry, Steven Akins. Make some noise. All right, here we go. They slap, bump, and we're gonna see if we see any wrestling from Matt. Looks like Matt's gonna stay on his feet. I like seeing a healthy Matt Elkins. All these guys had some nicks and knocks from the regular season, had a yeah. couple of months to heal, so we're gonna see the best version of all these guys. Nice little foot sweep attempt, man, ooh, okay. <laughs> Matt's done some Muay Thai, though. He's got those, those strong shins. Collar tie, 
guys feeling each other out. And this is one where you see this pacing, I think it's gonna be a little slower. You saw Hunter come in and just kind of like a bulldozer run over Evan. We're gonna see a much more um, slower paced matchup, I feel like. Matt takes a shot, ooh, he's in on the head. Steven starting to turn the corner. Oh, he turns it into a back take. Really nice work right there. He's in on the back. He's got one hook in. Can't and tell. So he doesn't have a seatbelt, but he's Two got hooks. an underhook and an overhook. We'll see if, uh, you know, this, this right here, the reset is crucial. The resets can really make or break a submission attempt. Whoever went, oh, we see Matt Elkins looking to take a little bit more of the position. <laughs> Calling out Matt Elkins. Yeah. <laughs> but he's in, looking for that choke. You see his choking arm is pretty deep. Steven looking to hand fight. The hand fight battle is just, it's really intricate. You can see that if Steven loses the wrist line, and he, especially if he doesn't get control of that thumb on the choking arm, it's gonna be really tough for him to stop the choke attempts. Matt doing a good job. He's gonna switch this possibly to an arm triangle. Steven though, hanging weight yeah. through that arm. He's it's straightening. Difficult to flatten him. Yeah, you see how he's straightening that arm, Lindsay, mm -hmm. and hanging his weight through it. Stephen doing a good job though, not getting flattened out. Looking to stay on his side. I think we might see a re-back take attempt here. Nice uh, job getting back to. Triangle. Yeah, really nice job by Stephen Aiken. Avoids all the attacks and finds himself in his preferred guard. That's a big win for Stephen early on in this match. Matt, though, still looking to hunt. He's, he's heavy on top, still has an underhook with his left arm. But Steven's got that professional half guard. I mean, he was by mm -hmm. far the best half guard player in season two. Absolutely. What do you really like to see from a good half guard player, Lindsay? Uh, well, Steven is going to have to be able to get to his side. And so, but Matt's not giving up on that, that head control right there. There we go, Steven. Mm, that yeah. was nice. He uses the jaws of life, but Matt, ready. He felt that underhook coming, and just the threat of the front, or the front headlock makes Steven go back flat to his back and give up that underhook. Looking to switch to a single butterfly here. He's got the single butterfly with an underhook. Good half guard work. Now he's into the butterfly. Ooh, Matt looks for a kind of a jumping triangle right there. Yeah, you can definitely tell Matt's moving a lot better and with a lot more confidence than he was during the regular season. Mm -hmm. And Matt's hiding that, that uh, right leg so that Steven can't extend the lockdown. Yeah, th that lockdown, if you've ever been in a really deep and tight lockdown, you know how much torque it puts on your knee. I've seen multiple ACL tears from the lockdown position. I have as well. So you actually need to retreat in that case, but not, Matt did a nice job of hiding. Well, Matt looking to hop over that single butterfly. Nice guard pass. Looking to put in the Kimura grip. He's gonna take the back again. He's got both hooks in. Is he already trying to dig under the yeah, chin? Yeah, he is. You can see that choking arm, that hand trying to punch in deep. See, I really like using that underhook arm to grab the wrist. You saw Matt have that. I can't really see what he has on the other side. But Steven does a great job, though, hanging weight, getting his back to the mat, and Matt has to take the top half guard position again. Man, that right there, like those are the small little things that people might miss. Like that was beautiful jujitsu by Stephen Aiken. Exactly. He's getting to his side in a really good attacking position now. He's got Matt's uh, left leg hooked. 
Yeah, I think as this match goes uh, longer and longer, you're going to see Steven get more and more comfortable. I mean, he really thrives in longer time limits. Mm. Interesting, Matt. Really interesting what he just did with his leg right there. He, yeah, he hit it. I think he's trying to hide his leg from a lockdown situation. That kind of takes away your base. Yeah, Matt's base is so good, though. I, I think, you know, he's just got that wrestling base where he just needs a little bit. He just needs to, you know, a little bit of a post to stop any sweep attempt. And you gotta be, you gotta know that Matt's thinking at all times, if Steven lifts his head, I'm going to choke him. There's a head and arm right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really nice use of that underhook on the leg. He uses that scoop grip to, to back step out of it. He's past the guard again. We're 6.33 in. This has been a really technically fun match to watch so far. Steven on his side. It's gonna be really tough for Matt to find an attack from here. Steven's in a great defensive position. Matt's Matt looking to- digging under that arm. Trying to isolate that arm away What's from your his body. What's your favorite way to open up a good defensive player? Uh, you gotta attack at the elbow instead of an armpit. So, and I wanna attach that elbow to my body as I fall. So you're thinking about jumping on a front headlock. Mm. Well, I don't, now that he's already, well, he's in, is he in quarter guard? No, he's in the mount. Okay. So we got Matt in on the mount, looking to take the back, and now they're back on their feet. And both these guys have really slick jujitsu. We're almost eight minutes in. We see another little foot sweep attempt. Collar tie by Steven. That's cool, I love these live events. <laughs> Nice, nice shot right there. He's on top. We've got Steven in on a leg though. Matt looking to clear the knee line. Ooh. Uses yeah. that leg attack to end up on top of Matt. Okay, scrambles. Nice. Oh, really nice scramble by Matt Elkins. Looking to finish in an arm triangle. You see Steven using that straight arm, but Matt's getting deeper on that arm. He needs to turn the corner. He's looking to get an S grip in right here. You hear them breathing, calming their heart rate. And you gotta remember that whoever wins this match goes against Hunter Coleman. Man, that was a beautiful scramble by both guys. Starts with the takedown. But Steven ends up on the leg. He uses that leg to sweep to the top, but then Matt scrambles. And, and one of Matt's best abilities, and I think, I'm gonna imagine, I never saw Matt wrestle, obviously, in high school or in college, but I'm gonna imagine he really was a good scramble-based uh, wrestler. He found himself on a lot, uh, scoring a lot of points off of the scrambles. Mm -hmm. See Steven looking to grab the shin of Matt's left leg. I wonder if he's gonna try and pull that leg into quarter guard and possibly then start working back to the half and butterfly. That seems to be his play from the bottom position. Ooh, Steven's bellying out right here. Matt's looking to get a seat belt. You definitely don't wanna stay in this belly down position too long. Matt's on top. You gotta be careful, Steven tripoding up and Matt falling off of the top. Yeah. 
But Matt does a good job right there. Gets control of the underhook. You see how he's got that wrist? That's going to stop mm -hmm. any tripod attempt of Steven to bump him off. Nice. Matt's back on the back. This is the third time we've seen Matt on the back. And you have to think each time, you know, one of these guys is getting an advantage. Either Steven's feeling Matt's back defense. Oh, this is deep. But Steven, heavy. Oh, right into a triangle. mounted triangle. Steven looking to hide that arm. Get a switch to his back. Steven's got to be careful here. Matt's almost locked it up. Oh, this is getting deep. I don't know if Matt quite has the yeah, angle. I, yeah, Steven's cutting off that angle. Yeah, Matt doesn't quite have the angle there. Steven's got his posture back. Oh, oh. and he gets the finish. 11-22, what a beautiful, beautiful match by both these guys. And we're gonna see Hunter Colvin go against Matt Elkin, but that's the match I expected. I expected to see a really high level technical match from both guys. That was beautiful, that was beautiful. Beautiful jujitsu. Yeah, so it's gonna be Matt Elkins and Hunter Colvin. Yeah, so now we have Hunter Colvin versus Matt Elkins. I'm excited to see this with Matt being able to wrestle from his feet. Oh yeah, so we get to see some some wrestling, wrestle against wrestle. Yeah. We we kind of got promised that during the season, but we. <laughs> yeah. We got disappointed a little bit. So. Getting ready to see the bad guy, Elijah Carlton, for the first time tonight. He's going against Kimoy Anderson, and man, I can't wait to see Elijah out there. Elijah's, uh, man, I just love his jujitsu. Really beautiful, fluid, attack-based jujitsu. He's got systems, just a system on top of system of attacks that really are difficult to stop. But Kimoy, he looked great all season. Do you think Kimoy's gonna be able to put pressure on Elijah? He did, he did a pretty good job in the finale. Now, the, the issue is, is that Elijah now is free to do any attack that he wants because he's not thinking about the points. He's thinking about getting Kamoy out of there as quick as possible. Yeah, yeah. And we saw in the last finale, Elijah go four for four with leg locks. I wouldn't be surprised to see him try and go three for three tonight. Yeah, it's going to be so hard to actually pass Elijah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I, if, if Kamoy can get in there and be able to flatten or get Elijah on his side, you know, that's going to be his best effort well, or his best path there. Lasting five plus minutes with Elijah, like that's where you could really start to see the tide maybe turn. If Kamoy can turn this into a 10, 15, 20 minute fight and he can really start to use his athleticism and his top pressure passing, mm -hmm. he, he might find some success. But he's you trying got, to say something about Elijah's cardio? <laughs> Elijah's cardio, it, it's, it's just definitely not his strong suit. He's not a grappler that's like, man, you know, Elijah's got all day cardio. No, no. I mean, he, he, yeah. So, <laughs> but he doesn't really need it to be submitting no. everybody in under three, four minutes. So drag him into deep waters. Yeah, that's definitely the strategy. You've got to, you have to withstand the first five minute barrage of attacks. Not a lot of guys can do that though, especially when Elijah's playing his full game. He's going in on legs, he's looking Coming up next, finals. we've got Brown Belt representing El Paso, Kamoy Anderson versus the bad guy, season one champion, Elijah Carlton. Elijah immediately sits, and you gotta think he's thinking leg lock. That's how their last match ended. Kamoy, though, showed really good pressure passing in their first match. But you kind of heard Elijah say, he was like, I was going for the six or seven, and mm. I felt like that was gonna be too hard, so entered a leg, and he, uh, Elijah feels like he can leg lock any of these dudes. Oh, he's going arm bar attempt. Looking for the armbar, Kamoy almost gets around. Elijah, though, uses the inversion to re-pummel the leg back through, and he's back playing the guard. This is my favorite aspect of Elijah's game, is the sit-up guard that he's added. In season one, we saw a lot of flat-backed Elijah. 
Mm -hmm. Season two, we'd be seeing him use those ankle picks to come up and those double Koichis to cause off balances. And his top game has looked ferocious. Kamoi doing a good job, though, not allowing Elijah to get the grips. He's going to try and enter in on his terms. He does not want Elijah getting grips and manipulating his base. So, yeah, Kamoi has a slight staggered step, but... Just that little play right there, you saw Elijah just posting. He was using his right foot to post, kind of messing with the mobility of Kamoi, and he uses his link to, to try and get that ankle pick. That, that's one big thing. Every season, I, you know, I'm obviously watching these matches all the time and studying, and that's like one big thing I've added to my own personal game is, you know, just added a couple of things. I've saw Elijah do this season, and Those I've been having a lot of success with it. But he's got that two-on-one. You see how he's trying to get that hand above his head? If he can get that hand above his head, he's going to be able to elevate. We see Damn. him go for the shoulder crunch. Nice play. Kamoi, uh, very aware, though. He uh, deflects all of Elijah's attempts, and he's back to his feet. Kamoi in, looking to pass the half guard, but this is where Elijah's got some really tricky triangle setups. So in Kamoi's position, what are you looking to do? What does he need to be wary oh, of that Elijah could throw at? Letting Elijah control his tricep. <laughs> yeah, that tricep <laughs> triangle attack is, is another one I've definitely added from him. I should probably PayPal Elijah like 20 bucks for, for a couple of yeah. moves I've stolen this season. <laughs> But look, I'm, I'm sure he'd appreciate that. <laughs> I shall always see, you see how Elijah's feet are looking to kind of just post against the ankles of Kamoi. That's going to just limit his mobility. It's going to mess with his mobility just a little bit, just enough to kind of slow Kamoi's side-to-side -side movement. Kamoi doing a good job of keeping his feet at just a, you know, a good distance, right outside those hooks. Three minutes in. And it's very, if you play a staggered stance, you get the ankle pick. And if he's got a square stance, he's got those double quichis. Mm -hmm. Kamoi doing a good job, though. He's, he's recognizing the ankle pick attempts. Mm -hmm. He saw him kind of sprawl right there, so Elijah couldn't. And Kamoi's been on a roll lately, too. He just won the fight to win brown belt oh, title, yeah. which is a huge deal. I mean, Kamoi going out there representing and just absolutely killed it. Won the fight to win title, which uh, it's a big, big, That's big, awesome. big deal in yes. the jiu-jitsu community. So huge, huge congrats to Kamoi on that big victory. But he's got himself with a big problem in front of him, and that is the bad guy, Elijah Carlton. Okay, Kamoi's letting him put his hooks on the inside in his inside space. That's kind of scary yeah oh it looks for kind of a rolling attack so Kamoi doing a good job if he's not getting to the position he wants he's just retreating and then mm -hmm. he's waiting for a better opportunity we're almost five minutes in Yeah, Kamoi not allowing any grips. No. Well, you can tell Elijah's looking for that two-on-one. Looks for that double <gasps> Koichi, looking to pull him in. No, nice. He's almost in on the leg. He's got that. Ooh. That's deep. He's... Then he gets the oh, finish with an God. outside heel <laughs> hook. Does it hurt? Does it hurt? Oh, it looks like Elijah might have got like his head hit or something. Now he gets stacked up on his neck. Oh. Uh, but man, what a sequence. <laughs> what a sick sequence right there. It's exactly what we talked about. We saw the double Koichi attempt, ankle pick, to outside heel hook. How fast that was. 
Yeah. I mean, once he got in, I'm guessing Elijah got stacked up on his neck a little bit. Mm -hmm. Took a little bit of a knock right there. But adrenaline definitely helps in these situations. He's not going to feel that in his next match, but he'll definitely feel that tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> but really, really nice play again, man. That, that's, that right there is something Patience. that I think you guys should go back and study. You know, you're looking to improve your guard, especially your open guard. That sequence right there was about as high level as it gets. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a snake strike. Yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> to the finish. But Kamoy did a good job, and he, he really did a great job of just not allowing and negating Elijah's initial grips. He was ready for the ankle picks. I think all these guys were kind of shocked because, it, you know, if you had watched Elijah prior to this season, you would have seen that he was a, you know, flat-backed player that was looking to pop up triangles and looking to get underneath, but you didn't see him sit up, and he wasn't as aggressive in his wrestling from his butt and wrestling from his knees. And that added a whole other element. And, yeah, you saw Komoi was definitely ready, though. He had definitely spent some time on how he was going to stop Elijah coming up from, uh, you know, using those ankle picks and double Koichis. Yeah, great match. I, I, like I said, I, I really liked how Kamoi was staying just on the outside, having his hands in, being able to deflect, and then seeing opportunities. And uh, Kamoi was flying in on several attempts as well. So... So we got our last match of the first round. We're All right, here we go. Coming up next, we've got Purple Belt. Coming out of 10th Planet Decatur, Kevin Primo. And he will be facing, coming out of 10th Planet Jacksonville, Brown Belt, Sam Barbosa. It's kind of crazy to me that Sam's only 195. I know. Like, I've grappled with Sam a few that. times, and he, when he grabs you, it's a grown man. Like, he <laughs> feels so strong, like a gorilla. He's got those gorilla <laughs> arms. Man, he's a beast. But we're definitely seeing a much more in shape Liquid Terminator. Kevin really was able to train really hard for this. Oh, but we see a pass by. We saw a little bit of Jake Elkins flare. So Jake might not be here, but his move was. That was a great pass by to the back. Sam was sinking in that body triangle, so. Yeah, and that's the issue. You know, Kevin kind of threw kind of a sloppy collar tie, and he just timed it, hit that pass by, and right on the back. <laughs> that was kind of the other move of this season. It was like Elijah's, uh, well, there was three or four, but one of them was that pass by from Jake Elkins. I mean, he hit it, what, like 10 times? Beautifully every time. Yeah. Well, that was... <laughs> exactly. It was Jake would be too. proud. Somewhere Jake felt that and was like, all right, <laughs> wrestling. But Sam, this is where Sam's a monster, man. He gets that body triangle. You see how he's laced on the outside. So he's got the body triangle and he's laced that far leg. So he's got his butterfly hook. Mm -hmm. That's going to stop... Uh, help stop Kevin's rotation even more with his hips. Kevin, though, one of his, if not his best defensive position is when his back has been taken. Mm -hmm. We saw him survive multiple guys this season. I mean, you saw Hunter have to eventually switch to a different submission. So we'll see if Sam can find a way to get underneath the neck of Kevin Primo. Yeah, I think this should be another reason why he's called Liquid Terminator. He just kind of pours over to the side, and his back just goes to the mat. Yeah. I bet he wishes that he was sweaty right now. <laughs> it won't be long. Just give him a couple more minutes. Somebody dump some water on Kevin. <laughs> just make him sweaty. Maybe he can just make himself sweaty. Hmm, he can like just with think his mind. hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> he can just open his pores. <laughs> That's probably not, that's probably the black belt version of Kevin. Mm. He's not quite there yet. Yeah, he's got some more meditating to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But 
he's still in this body triangle. And if you've never been in a body triangle, the body triangle, just imagine having a boa constrictor squeeze around your stomach all the way up to the ribs. Like it, it can be in any one of those. It makes it hard to get in all yes. the oxygen that you, that you want. Hard to breathe. You're trying to move, but you're stuck. You see Kevin, I mean, he's making some headway here, but he's still in a really bad position. Yeah. And, Sam's legs are so long. I mean, he can just keep that body triangle and hooks. Kevin does a good job, though, trying to win the head position. I mean, trying to get his head to the map, but Sam's position is just perfect, honestly. His bad uh, yeah. game, his bad game is, is very, very high level. Well, Sam came out a little more aggressive than I was expecting. I was kind of expecting him to play, um, you know, I wouldn't use the word um, lazy, but you saw lazy in some of his matches. You know, he would pull guard, he would allow guys to get some offensive movements on him, and then he would find a submission with a minute or two left. But this one, I mean, he just went right to the pass by, and he's been in this back take uh, offensive position for the past three minutes. So the body triangle is – really good like at immobilizing your opponent but it also immobilizes you and so do you think that it's a good offensive option to keep your hips locked like that when you're trying to make an angle on Kevin well here's the here's the thing if you can hold the back for as long as you want like let's say I told you hey you can hold the back for 15 minutes this way or you can hold the back with traditional hooks, which is without the body triangle, so the feet's you know, right on the hip line, right? So just underneath um, the hip. Um, you're gonna choose that 15 minutes, right? Because mm -hmm. you see Sam, he's had four minutes of offense, and every minute that he keeps occurring, right, he keeps gaining momentum, and he's gonna find a submission eventually. You can yeah. only defend for so long. Exactly. But the body triangle on some people does kind of tax your legs a little bit. Um, you know, like if, if your body, if their body type is different or, you know, they're a little bit bigger than you, I find that my legs get a little bit mm -hmm, yeah. taxed a little bit in well, the body triangle. Me and triangle. you weren't blessed with those long, long strong <laughs> well, legs. Right. So do I've got you, those average guy legs. So do you think that hook that he's using there uh, – on the other side of the body triangle, that right hook that Sam is using, is that just a long leg person advantage? No, you'll see, uh, like too? Damian Maya uses that. He'll actually use an inside hook in some of his MMA fights. Oh, so like in between um, the legs. Mm -hmm. He'll do it in between the legs. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, you know, again, Sam's long legs, uh, there's advantages to it. And there are also, there's some disadvantages to being longer limbed, but there's definitely more advantages. And one of the advantages is your body triangle, like, like you said, some people's legs get tired, but Sam's legs are so long, like, it's not yeah. really taxing him as much as, you know, if somebody barely had the body triangle and they're trying to use mm -hmm. their muscles to keep the position, Sam's not having to use that because he right. has the length necessary. It's securely locked over the shin. Mm -hmm. He's not doing mm -hmm. it over his toes. So. Yeah. But again, Kevin, very difficult to submit. He, he him, and uh, Keelan, uh, exactly. almost said the yeah. camera guy. <laughs> you know, the camera guy. He's like <laughs> one of the hardest Keelan. people in the world to choke. <laughs> but, <laughs> but both those guys, man, have they're so difficult to tap from mm -hmm. you know any position, but especially from the back, man. Yeah. You get on their back, you're like, oh, my gosh, all right, I'll give up. Yeah, their body just automatically makes that angle. It's just like mm -hmm. it's off. It's just your choke is going to be slightly off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just and they're really good at winning the head position. But you see Kevin's not able to win the head position just because of that body triangle. Oh, Sam's looking to get around the face. Kevin's looking to push up, and he gets the tap on a face lock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The semifinals are set. We have Hunter Colvin versus Matt Elkins and Elijah versus Sam. But just like we were saying, I mean, Sam held the position for six minutes. He had six minutes to look for opportunities, and all it takes is one. 
Yeah, so you, yeah, you secured the lower body. Now you just have to hand fight. Well, I tell our athletes, I'm like, look, if you're looking to get better at a submission, master the position first. If you're looking to get good at rear naked chokes, if you can't hold the back for five minutes, if like you can barely hold it for 30 seconds, you only have 30 seconds of opportunity. You want to get comfortable, as we just saw with Sam Barboza, like, he, he looked like he could have held that for 10, 15, 20 uh, minutes. Yeah. And so that's where you want to eventually get your back game to that level. So use that clock. Use that timer as your friend to help you and see how long you can hold the position before you even go for the submission. Yeah. Well, I've heard it several times, you know, position over submission. But, yeah, I mean, that perfectly makes sense. And any, in any scenario, you need to secure a position, be able to pin, and then, yes, that gives you the opportunity to take several different advantages, several different paths to the submission. Well, just like in uh, some of the previous March Madnesses, um, you know, you see a chalk semifinal. I mean, I think these were probably the favorites to progress to the semifinals. I shouldn't say probably. They were the favorites to progress right. to the semifinals. And they all did their job. We saw really good performances from all dudes. I mean, all four of these guys are on fire tonight. Right. And we're not doing team points or anything like that, but it's interesting that it's two blues and two reds that are still left. Yeah, yeah, definitely uh, very interesting. Matt Elkins is, um, you know, he, he was a semifinalist in season one. He had two really good matchups in his quarterfinals match. He one of the matches of the night. I mean, if Joe and Kevin wouldn't have stole the show, I mean, I love that Nilo versus Matt Elkins match where Matt Elkins hit that anaconda to send him to the semifinals. But pretty quickly, he got tapped by Elijah in the semifinals. So I'm thinking Matt's prepared. He's ready to go out there and give Hunter the hardest fight of his life. I believe that. And you can't, you can't count out Matt Elkins. And no. just like season one, he had some trouble. He had some really tough competitions in the beginning. And so that put him point-wise towards the bottom. But he just kept gaining points, kept gaining points, and, and worked his way up into the semifinals, yeah. Yeah. And Matt Elkins is, is, you know, as much as we've talked about Elijah, because Elijah and Hunter have went on these incredible streaks, right? I mean, at one point, Elijah was 34-0. and 0. <laughs> I mean, or excuse me, he was 30, uh, 39 and 0. Was it 39 and 0? No, it was 38 and 0 because it was 14 plus 24. So, yeah, it was 38 and 0. Oh. But Matt Elkins has been just as, or maybe just a little bit underneath because he hasn't been on the run that Elijah was on, but he's definitely a PGF Hall of Famer. Like, For when there's sure. a PGF Hall of Fame, Matt Elkins will be in the initial class. He's had two phenomenal seasons. He's got highlight after highlight. He slayed the big brother for all the little brothers out there. He <laughs> went out there and beat his trash-talking big brother. And he's been in the semifinals of both finales. Impressive. He's just impressive. Like, so you, yeah. can't, you can't count him out. He's going to have a good showing regardless. Yeah, so. yeah uh, 100%. And you know that if you get your neck up, like if Matt gets your neck, you are in trouble. Well, it was very interesting to see Matt do those uh, attempted takedowns a couple of times against Steven just to get his, and I think that it was a strategy to get Steven's head low and then attack, attack the head. So it was pretty. Always beautiful jujitsu. Yeah. And what we've seen from hunters, you don't want to be on bottom. Matt's one of the few guys, him and Sam Barboza have the wrestling to end up on top of Hunter. We haven't seen Hunter play bottom. I mean, I've watched Hunter in other events play his guard, and what do you know? He's got a phenomenal black belt level guard. But it's definitely, you can see from this season, he wants to get on top, he wants to smash, and he wants to find a way to your back. With the Kimura trap, yeah. Yeah, yeah. His Kimura trap, man, it definitely makes you want to go back and, and really study the Kimura trap systems. There, there's so many guys that have come out over the years and, and really shown high-level ways to attack off of those grips. Mm -hmm. But Hunter Colvin, it's about time for him to come out with his own DVD because a oh, lot yeah. of the community would... would Kimura trap DVD, instructional, please. Yeah, let's go, Hunter Colvin. <laughs> so what's the initial thing that you need to look out for for that Kimura trap? Like, do you need to hide your wrist or you need to be hiding your elbow? No, it's your elbow line. So if you just look at your arms, you just put your arms by your side, right? Your mm -hmm. elbows are touching your ribs. 
the more your elbow starts to flare from that position, right, and you mm -hmm. start to open that space, any moment somebody could go for a Kimura attempt. If your elbows stay inside the line of your ribs, it's mm -hmm. going to be very difficult for your opponent to grab a Kimura. Yeah. Science. <laughs> it's, I believe you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think Hunter's got the science down. Well, he's got something down. Yeah. He's making he's it got, work. He's got techniques that, that's uh, extending that elbow away from the body. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because he's so heavy, right? So you want to push him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a round of applause for our next match. We've got black belt Hunter Colvin coming to the stage. And he will be facing SBG's brown belt, Matt Alkins. So you see Matt with just, I love those ironclad rash guards. They are yeah. so Elijah slick. was wearing one as well. Oh, nice double leg. Oh. They're off the mats. They're both back to their feet. <laughs> oh, and you see a little out the gate. from Matt. And you see Hunter just right away. That's the Hunter we saw all season is just, yeah. oh, first 10 seconds, if I'm not shooting, I'm not trying. <laughs> <laughs> he looks for a little jumping snap down guillotine of his own. Almost a minute in. You see, oh, Hunter pulls guard, looks to get underneath. Matt looking to get in on the headlock, switching to 100%. But Hunter very aware, and this is where he wants to be, passing, trying to shelve that knee, looking for that Kimura, beautiful rolling Kimura. That's the Hunter Colvin. Oh, uh, I think that's the go. first time all season that somebody's defended and made Hunter give up that Kimura. Really nice work. Nice. Uh, and use of the legs right there. Matt stands up, really nice job. Very nice, very nice. Exciting already. We see uh -huh. Hunter sit, but man, that rolling Kimura was beautiful. His timing <laughs> on the rolling Kimura is, is... I was watching his base just because he floats so well, and I was yeah. watching where his weight was, and yeah. then he just starts rolling. Yeah, he sees it, and he's just like... Shut up. But we see Matt Elkins on top, passing right leg forward. Hunter's in kind of a, a, a looser reverse De La Hiva. Oh, you see Matt looking to pull up. That was a nice little off balance right there. Oh, Ooh, nice spin. Oh, Barambolo, what a back take. <laughs> Man. <Yeah. laughs> so you see Matt go for the outside heel hook. Hunter uses the Barambolo to take the back. That was awesome. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty sweet. It was a really nice off balance by Matt. Ah, uh, nice. Dude, just right over the face. Mm. <laughs> that was incredible. Uh, yeah, we did see a few of those in the season, those uh, rear naked chokes right across the chin, right across the mouth. Beautiful. Man, Matt Elkins had some really nice moments right there. I think you saw Hunter, like he went in and he could feel how, how high level Matt's front headlock game was. And so he went, no, I'm gonna play this for my butt. I'm gonna sit down. And that was a really good choice. He uses that, sweeps. Well, you see Matt jump on a leg. Hunter uses that to come up on top, takes the back off the Baron Bolo, and he's uh, exactly what he did to Judo Justin. We saw Justin Williams trying to attack an outside heel hook on, um, on Hunter, and Hunter used that same counter to take the back and finish with a choke. It's beautiful. It's, it's so awesome to see such amazing jujitsu in the PGF. I'm just so proud of like what we've created here. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> without you, <laughs> right. none of this would none exist. None of this would be possible without me. <laughs> There's a lot of truth to that. You're definitely the unsung hero of pretty That's much right. everything, I'm, especially I'm everything Brandon does. Yeah, yeah. This is, guys, this is like me uh, stretching a lot 
being up on a big screen up there. That's really weird for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm normally like, no, don't look at me. Don't talk to me. I'm behind the scenes back here. Yeah. So. I also get really uncomfortable in front of mics. <laughs> I do. So good job, us. Like, I was just stretching. kidding. I don't get uncomfortable in front of mics. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but man, what a back take. We've been working at 10th Planet Decatur. Brandon's been uh, really showing some amazing curriculum this month of taking the back off of leg lock attempts. And so for any of the, the 10th Planet Decatur students, you can really see that used at the highest level against yeah. a very, very top-notch practitioner, Matt Elkins. Coming to the stage, we have representing Southside Jiu-Jitsu Club in Chattanooga, Brown Belt PGF Season 1 Finale Champion, the bad guy, Elijah Carlton! And he will be facing 10th Planet Jacksonville Brown Belt, Sam Barbosa! Oh. So it's really interesting, you've seen them stand. Ooh, okay. Kamish <laughs> almost got flattened. What if he just sort of thrown a punch right? Like, <laughs> But we knew we'd see Elijah sit. We see Sam in the standing position. Sam looking, you know, he's thinking about distance management here. And Sam knows, again, he's got all the time in the world. Exactly. Yeah. Wait, we got an in and out burger in Decatur now, so he knows. No, oh, we got a water burger. Even if he waits six <laughs> hours, in and out will probably, the line might be even be gone <laughs> by the time this match is over. Yeah, I heard somebody waited an hour and a half at the Whataburger. Oh, Whataburger. I don't yeah, know why it's Whataburger. Said it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a Whataburger. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But. Sam staying out away from the hooks. Elijah testing out that neck. Yeah. Elijah, he's definitely going to wait for Sam to kind of come in and try and commit. Elijah looking to manipulate. So you see Elijah kind of trying to bait Sam to come in. Sam trying to come in with the double unders, backs back out. It's like Jurassic Park when the Raptors are like testing the fence to see where the weak spots are. <laughs> yeah. So we see Sam's even using a little bit more distance control than Kamoy did, staying on you know, mm -hmm. even a step further back. So we're two minutes in. Nothing's really happened yet. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe this could be the 30 minute one. 30 minutes. <laughs> I said we wouldn't have a match going over 30. But who knows? We shall see. We're 225 in. Sam looking to do a little heel toss. see Elijah looking to get his own distancing down. He kind of sees the, the distance that Sam's playing from, and he's kind of calculating the best way to attack. And he's using that length. Three minutes in. I just got a grip. And yeah, Elijah's so strong with those two-on-one grips. It's one of the things. It's it's strategy. You got to wonder kind of what Sam's going through his mind, what he's looking for, because he's, he's looking for an, something. I think he's looking at some lever to control. He's kind of testing out the ankles. Can I control or pin an ankle? Can I get a knee? You need to control some lever. So 
So four minutes in. But as soon as you get a grip on a lever, you're in within range for Elijah to grab a grip. Mm -hmm. so. And you saw them both standing next to each other at the beginning. They both have really similar body types. Sam's yeah. a little more stocky, probably got an extra 15 pounds on Elijah right now. But they both have about the same length, both very yeah, long. Yeah, I was thinking that too. But Sam, Sam is always very calculated. He's a really good competitor. And so you know that he's been thinking about this match. I'm sure he assumed that they both would win their first round matchup. Mm -hmm. He's got a phenomenal coach in Brian Brown. And you can imagine they've game planned something for Elijah. That's five minutes. Yeah, and those of you that don't train, you know, this may be kind of, uh, it may not make sense to you guys, but like you saw in Elijah's last match, it could take just a second for him to be able to enter in and submit. So it's more like anticipation. Yeah, you used it good. It's like a snake bite, right? You got somebody as, as deadly as Elijah. When Elijah gets in on something, it just takes split second for you to go, ah, oh, tap. Right. You gotta tap quick. But Sam really hasn't, he really hasn't set up any attacking positions. It doesn't really look like he's even attempting to attack the guard right now. It looks like he's trying mm -hmm. to lull kind of Elijah to just let his guard down. Elijah needs to stay disciplined. He needs to stay focused. Um, so do you think Sam is trying to drag him out into yeah, longer so. time limits? I think he's, he's wanting Elijah to either stand up and come after him or kind of just lay down and, and let him get into a deeper passing position. But we're almost seven minutes in. You kind of hear the referee and he's like, hey, somebody's got to do something. <laughs> and it's crucial, you know, that you have... Um, oh. That you have some type of, of you know, because a few minutes of this is fine, but when you start getting 7, 10, 15, mm. 20 minutes, it starts to get tough. Yeah, but the first person that decides to go in for an attack that's not well-timed is, is going to end up losing. Yeah. So we're almost 7.30 in. I wonder how many butt scoots Elijah's done. <laughs> I think they have like a butt how scoot much counter. It's like, yeah. <laughs> getting that glute workout. <laughs> so you see Elijah now playing off his back. Eight minutes in. And this is, this is kind of okay. where, especially I think like in a, a no time limit match, you kind of need something. Like in CJJ, they have a, um, a get down rule where it's like, okay, there mm. hasn't been a minute of, you know, especially if you're on your feet, one person's got to go into the double under hooks and the guard and the other person has to take the top position. I like that rule because it's very uh, like opposite of UFC MMA, you know, if there's too much stalling or whatever on the ground for the refs, liking then they stand it up but yeah eddie's like no 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 for jujitsu we need to get down yeah so. but we're almost nine minutes in now
But what you were saying about dragging uh, Elijah into the deep water, but Elijah's cardio is not very uh, tested right here. So yeah, yeah, no. he's, you know, able to keep a good steady heart rate here. This is not taxing him. You see Elijah now getting a little more aggressive. But Elijah's got to be careful. He needs to, again, mentally stay in the zone. He can't allow himself to start getting you know, angry. He, yeah, like Elijah's that, best but... when he's, you know, playing his game. He's allowing guys, um, you know, to enter into his ranges. Mm. We're at 9.50, almost 10 minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> Elijah almost just giving the back. <laughs> yeah, I think we might see like a possum guard here in a second. He got the He's tricep. Looking for that tricep. <laughs> so yeah, Sam really needs to try and win an inside position. This is really more like mental warfare than physical warfare. Mm -hmm. We're almost 12 minutes in, we're at 11.30. Those mats are going to have Sam's footprints all over them. <laughs> so both brown belts, but what's the difference in, do you know how long they've each been training? Elijah's been a brown belt for a while, hasn't he? Yeah, Elijah has been a brown belt for a while. He, um, he's, uh, you know, out of the Chattanooga area. He's got his own school. School's beautiful. I love the, the layout of his school. It's a really cool, he's got some really cool woodwork finishing mm -hmm. on the inside. He's already had a couple of tournaments, right? Yeah. And we should start breaking down the decor of each gym. <laughs> Southside Jiu-Jitsu Club, home of some of the best woodwork finishing in <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu you'll find. Yeah. It is cool when though, like your, your studio looks like a, like a Japanese dojo or something. Yeah. They actually have mats now that look like, like yeah. bamboo no, it's, it's and definitely, stuff. It's, it's definitely cool. cool. You know, it's funny, we have that huge building, right? And a huge, but there's really not like a lot of decor. Oh no, yeah. I saw yeah. though the art of jujitsu in California they have a world-class outdoor facility now. Like COVID, they just went, no, we're gonna build an outdoor gym. Ooh, and it is awesome. sick. Yeah, do they have mats that are movable or do they just- uh, No, it's like underneath gym? canopy and everything's white. You know how their gym is like- Oh man. Pure, yeah, it's sick. It's so hard to keep clean. <laughs> yeah, I was like, dang, I wish we had some of that art of jujitsu money. Uh, yeah. Oh. So we're almost 13 and a half in and you know, so. So did you train outdoors in Lebanon? I did, yeah. I don't know, I don't know if I've ever trained outdoors before. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. We were in the mountains of, of uh, yeah, we were in the mountains, it was amazing. I 
think uh, I think Elijah's doing a great job, though, again, in staying in the zone and, and not, um, mm. you know, not getting flustered here. Right. In the past, I've seen Elijah get flustered. You know, he'll go Good after pack. guys or he'll let guys mm. pass. You know, just like, whatever. I'll just lay flat on my back and mm -hmm. let you take what position you want. Elijah's been on a roll himself lately. You know, he's... He, uh, like you said, he won submission underground, which is a super high level tournament. Um, you can tell Chell Sonnen's a fan, and if Chell's a fan of you, you know, you're going places in any right. combat sport. And Chell is loyal to the, his guys that, yeah, he yeah is. his guys. Yeah, Chell is super loyal. Yeah. His show's incredible. I mean, he just, just him talking for three hours. <laughs> Just three straight hours of Chell Sonnen. And well, that's kind of what we do, right? <laughs> like hours of Matt's cow. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so used to like hearing my own voice now that it's like, yeah. But I would like to see Elijah get on the main card. I would really like to see him kind of move his way up the, the Submission Underground rankings. So who holds the number one rank in Elijah's Mason weight Fowler. class? No, Mason Fowler's the man. Like, that's the guy Elijah's chasing and everybody's chasing. Let's make a noise for uh, these two competitor guys. Let's make some noise. So Mason Fowler, though, in my mind is, like, really big. Like, he's up in a, a, another weight class. Yeah, he is. He is, okay. but it's like, that's the main belt you, like, oh, that's okay. what you want. Okay, okay. And so we're almost 16 minutes in. It looks like we're going to have our, our first long match of the night. <laughs> but we only have three more. We've that's got this one, yeah. the finals, and then the super fight. And the super fight's capped. So, I don't know, I'd say cozy up next to whoever you're next to. <laughs> and get to know the person because we could be here for a bit. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> it was sweet little arm drag right there. You saw you get that hip control. I know, yeah. And Sam did a forward roll. And then, we're getting some heckling from the crowd. <laughs> yeah. So we're 17 minutes in. And yeah, Elijah also, he won high rollers. He went out there, won the Brown Belt High Rollers event. That's like, a big when's, deal, too. When's Elijah going to get his black belt? I don't know. I don't know who he's, uh, who is he ranked under now? He's, uh, that's a good point. Uh, good question. I know he is underneath the, uh, the guys in Chattanooga, um, you know, the guys he started with. He's a brown belt under them, but he trains a lot with Sean Applegate, and he, you know, has his own gym, so I'm not sure if so he's going to go Sean. the 10th Planet route or if he's going to go with uh, the guys in Chattanooga, a gogi. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I think I think Sam is bearing the weight of the this eighteen minutes now, like pacing, going around the outside, coming in for an attempt, coming back out, while Elijah's able to stay seated and butt scoot. So Yeah. Well I, I think this is wearing on Sam's cardio a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. This is really mental warfare, you imagine the military takes this tactic. <laughs> so he had a let's go Elijah chant. Or not a chant, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is definitely, man, the, the, the venue is just so cool here. We're just so lucky that Epic gives us access to this, you know, a couple times a year to, to have our big show. 
because I really can't yeah. imagine a better place. So Epic Church used to be a movie theater. And so exactly. this used to be, you know, um, a movie theater. And so a lot of the spaces are just perfect to have an event like this. Yeah. I, I've been to the movies here. <laughs> have you? <laughs> yeah. I went to the movies here, yeah. Oh, dang. Yeah. I, I'm old. Yeah. I don't I know if you knew or not. <laughs> did you see Gone with the Wind? <laughs> not here. It was at a different theater. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, you just said you were old. That's the first old movie I bought. <laughs> so we're almost 20 minutes in. I think this match total time is about to pass all the previous matches. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I was looking. I was like, yeah. we're about to get out of here quick." Yeah, you said the first round in thirty minutes, right? No, I, was I like, said no, over no. under thirty minutes. Yeah, I was like, "Well, this is the semifinals." Oh yeah, you think it was thirty minutes for the first oh, round? Oh yeah, it was way under. But see, Hunter's got to be just kicking back in the back, relaxing. Yeah, he's getting his cigar out and he's like, <laughs> just chilling. Yeah, I mean, his match—he's been on the mat total of five minutes. Very. Uh, Elijah Carlton, right? So we saw Elijah Carlton last time. He went four for four. All four of his matches lasted less than 10 minutes. He was in and out quick, where the guys on the right side of the bracket, um, you know, saw Caleb McAllister get to the finals, but he had a way tougher route. Oh, yeah. And that plays in, especially in these no time limit. Like, Elijah's mat time right now, I mean, he had, he had a good eight-minute match with Kamoy, and now he's, you know, he's been out there almost 30 total minutes mm -hmm. so far where Hunter's been out there for less than five. Oh, that's, that's significant. Uh oh. We got some ADCC drums going yeah. in the background now. I'm gonna turn yeah. up the tempo. The, the ADCC drums are, are pretty awesome. <laughs> they are. You remember the World Cup in 2014 in South Africa? Remember? Uh, well, <laughs> I didn't watch World Cup. <laughs> okay, well, they had those, those like, uh, no, gonna, not, not flute things. What were they called? The, oh, my gosh. They were the most annoying things. And everybody, it'd be like 20,000 people blowing this, like, instrument you'd never heard of. And it was, like, the most annoying noise. Was it a didgeridoo? It was kind of like if a sick duck was... Yeah, there we go. Vulu's Vela. There we go. <laughs> yes. And it was like, oh, my. Dude, the whole match, these people, for 15,000 of them would be blowing this, this Vuzu Vela. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We awful. went to, uh, we've been to a couple of UFCs, and it seems like people do that Ric Flair. Woo! Woo! There you go, <laughs> that. <laughs> like over and over again. And I was like, is Ric Flair here? Yeah, what if those like Vuzu Vuela started playing and one of them just tapped? Because they were like, oh, stop the noise. <laughs> About we're 22 minutes in. Really, there's only been one moment of action. Mm -hmm. We've seen... <laughs> we've seen the arm drag to... Yeah, We've seen the then, arm drag to the uh, grip on the hips, and then we saw you know Sam have to do a, a quick roll out to back to his feet. But really, other than that, it's been a stalemate. Mm -hmm. Neither guys had anything. But see, this is this is kind of what you got two very high level competitors, and so when I was talking about like what I was concerned about with the qualifiers, you know, you get these high level competitors, and. It, and this is what it, it turns into is because they're so good. You've got to be so good at defense that you can't make a mistake. You've got to wait for the perfect moment. And so this is why the PGF needs blues and white belts. Yeah. I love me some blue belts. <laughs> the blue belts, it's funny, like in both seasons, like season one, season two, you know, the guys that I really remember are Blake Randall, right? Exactly. Noah Randolph. Season two, we've got Evan Stapler. We've got, yeah, we got, we got Evan Stapler and Dump Trunk Randy. I mean, Randy Roden, if you didn't leave season two a fan of Randy, like. I'm a Randy fan. You're a bad person. Yeah. Now, if you let, didn't leave a fan of Evan, I can understand that. <laughs> but Randy Roden, dude. Oh, yeah. Man, just class act. 
and it looked like he never even got gassed, always chewing his gum and just happy to be out there. I think that kid's future is super bright. I would love to see him I'm back the, in a couple of seasons. I was know? thinking the exact same thing. Because you, you imagine, man, you know, that kid, two, three more years, he gets some submissions under his belt, he gets a few more high-level tournaments, he could come back and compete with any of these guys. Well, you were saying during your commentary at one point, you were like, if I could just have an hour with Randy, you know, <laughs> just a private yeah. lesson with Randy, yeah. and, you know, you could turn Yeah, uh, generally an hour private lesson for me will level you up by about <laughs> three levels. Okay, you got a percentage on that, like a number? Yeah. Well, it depends on how much money you pay me. Oh, okay. The more money you pay me, the more I The more deets you give? Yeah. <laughs> So they turn the ADCC drums off. They're like, that's not working. We need a new strategy to get the tempo up. But that's what's cool. It's like, this is a different type of jujitsu, right? It's 25. This is the Gracie way. The Gracies loved no time limit matches. Mm -hmm. And they wanted it to be ended and only one guy quitting. And that's kind of what Sam's looking for. And you see Elijah kind of swag as he's like, nah, dude, I'm not going to mentally break here. I'm not going to allow you to get deep. I'm not going to allow you to win a position. You're going to have to come take it. That's good. But and and I like seeing that in Elijah. I like, I like seeing a maturing game come out. That's awesome. He's now on that national competition scene. And so, yeah, he's got to have a, a, a nice mature game, a nice mindset. So we're almost, we're 25 and a half in. Both guys are on their feet now. We haven't seen any wrestling. You definitely would think that Sam would have the, uh, Sam would have the advantage on his feet. Mm -hmm. But Elijah's always in the lap. I'm really interested to see if Elijah can get in on something. Elijah sits again. <laughs> <laughs> There's the bad guy. <laughs> Elijah sending a message to the Sam fans. <laughs> All right, Sam's playing in a little closer. Almost 27 minutes in. But yeah, no, the Gracies really liked no time limit matches and they have this whole thing on kind of hope. You know, they want to take away, um, I, I think the Gracies are kind of describing it as like when you know that there is a timer that is going to save you. So whether it's three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, you can, hold you can play, yeah, you can hold off, you can play to that timer. And, uh, and they kind of uh, talk about how if you're on a shipwreck, right? Like if you get left off, let's say on a deserted island or you're in the middle of the ocean and somebody tells you, hey, I'm gonna be back in 12 hours. Your chances of surviving that situation are really high because you know, okay, somebody is coming end. back for me. Mm -hmm. But if you're stranded in the middle of nowhere, you don't know if anybody's coming. You don't know how long you have to survive. You have no hope. <laughs> yeah. You know, and they talk about how that's what they want their jujitsu to be, is they want to suck the hope. They want competitions to kind of reflect that. They want there to be situations where that gets kind of playing in your mind, like this right here, right? Like, neither guy, like, nobody's going to step in and stop this. No. Like, Let's dude, take this Pastor Ivy might be preaching over there in the pulpit Sunday, and these guys are still <laughs> doing this We're dance. We're still here. <laughs> <laughs> so Pastor Ivy's given the good word from the book, and these guys are still going at it. I don't know. You think the roof might fall in? <laughs> <laughs> Let's take this opportunity and talk about the dates of the qualifiers for season three. So the first one's going to be here in Decatur, Alabama on June 26th at 10th Planet Decatur. Louisville, Kentucky, July 10th. That's going to be uh, at 
Chu Jitsu, Nick Albin's location, uh, Derby City Martial Arts, and that was mm -hmm. the name of this Derby school? Derby City Martial Arts, you are correct. The third one's going to be in Atlanta, Georgia, on August the 14th at Sean Applegate School at 10th Planet Atlanta. The next one's in Jacksonville, Florida on September 11th, and that is at 10th Planet Jacksonville, Brian Brown School. And then the last one is in Austin, Texas on October 9th, and that's going to be 10th Planet Austin. So. And those qualifiers um, are, again, a great opportunity to showcase your jujitsu. If you are looking to be a part of season three, you must go to one of those qualifiers. Now, you might be thinking, hey, I'm not good enough, or I haven't been training long enough. I'm just a white belt. I'm just a blue belt. As I've already said, blue belts can make a name for themselves in this format. There's always going to be big upsets, uh, big upsets. There's always going to be somebody that makes a name off of this PGF season. And it could be you. So go out there, give it your best. You might get selected, and you might be the next guy that, you know, is starting to get looks from different professional organizations because you had a killer PGF season. And it's going to do amazing things for your jujitsu and your competition mindset. I've heard several guys go, and I, I just I did three competitions every day or three matches every day for five days, and now it's just and I was going against brown and black belts. Now it's just like when I go to a naga, who cares, you know? So it, it takes out those competition jitters because you're doing it so much uh, for five days, three matches every day, and. Um, yeah, and you're getting to go against black belts and brown belts that you probably would not have an opportunity to go against at any other time. So, you know, there's not going to be a collection of that kind of talent near you for, you know, unless you go to high, high-level competitions. But this is an amazing opportunity. So, yes, white belts, blue belts. Uh, Brandon was saying um, catch wrestlers, judo guys, you know, whoever. Yeah, and this next season's 170. So smallest division we've done so far. The 170 pound guys have a different type of jujitsu. Um, I feel like 170 to 185 guys have the most versatile jujitsu. They can kind of standing pass. They can play heavy, but they can also play very um, movement based games. And I'm a big, big fan of that weight class. So I'm excited to see what grapplers come out. As I've already mentioned, Elijah Carlton has committed to doing season three. I think him at 170 is a terrifying prospect, and I would love to see some top-notch guys come to try and take out the bad guy. Exactly, and another aspect would be the social media exposure. Um, I've heard some of these guys that are competing on the national level say that they don't get the kind of uh, media attention from anything else that they got from the PGF, you know, their names getting out there. All these people are participating in fantasy leagues and in the chat, and you're gaining true fans this way. So it's definitely beneficial all the way around. So I guess the big question is, we have our MPGF lore. There supposedly was a match that went an hour and 12 minutes in season one. Oh, yeah between Joe Kai and Kevin Primo. I've heard tell of And this. it was a super exciting matchup. And when we saw, uh, especially when we saw Joe survive that calf crush attempt from Kevin, right? Right. Sick, it was a really, really good match back and forth. And Joe ends up winning outside heel hook hour and 12 minutes. Will this pass that? I don't think so, but it could. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere the people were like, please. <laughs> Tell me what you think about this uh, Gordon pulling out of the, pulling out of his fights. Yeah, that's wild. You know, uh, Gordon Ryan is the biggest name in our sport. So, you know, if you're not a big fan of grappling, it'd be kind of like if, um, hmm, if like Mike Trout in baseball or uh, Patrick Mahomes just like had to pull out. Like Patrick Mahomes was like, I can't compete anymore because I have this illness that doesn't allow me to practice. And so it's a big deal. Um, it's definitely a, a bad day for the sport because, I mean, Gordon was just on the Joe Rogan podcast. He's really been getting a lot of attention from, you know, not just jujitsu people. He's been getting a lot of mainstream attention. He was really looking like the first athlete that was going to cross over 
into becoming, you know, you never, nowhere near the level of Conor McGregor, but kind of like how Conor McGregor and before him, Ronda Rousey. I mean, you saw Ronda Rousey cross over and become mainstream. And then Conor did that to an even larger extent. Mm -hmm. It's looking like Gordon was going to be that first guy that, you know, people that didn't train jujitsu. Knew who he was. Yeah, and like followed him and were fans of him. So it's definitely a big blow. Um, you know, he had three matches. He was supposed to fight Luis Ponza next Friday, who's number one. He gets, you know, uh, he has to pull out. Craig Jones takes his place. But he was also supposed to fight Aoki at one championship. And, uh, yeah, it's not good. Mm, sad day. Yeah. Yeah, that's the issue, you know, um, staph infections. I mean, staph infections are, are scary, scary stuff. You know, I, I see guys, especially people new to the sport, they'll have something, um, you know, a spot on them, and they don't take it seriously. Mm. But that spot could quickly turn into something, you know, life-threatening. Exactly, yeah. But we're almost 35 minutes in. Still, neither guy willing to, to kind of give in see a, a heel toss right there but Sam's not gonna pass unless he wins an inside position and Elijah knows this but it's almost like okay so you know when you see fighters in MMA they just jab 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 but you got to have combos so like yeah. a heel toss needs to be followed up with something on the back side so I really like to see Sam put a, a combo together right here yeah See Sam getting a little more aggressive, but still not finding his way to the inside position. We're almost 36 minutes in. But didn't Gordon retire once already? Yeah, but that was a fake retirement. <laughs> Every good athlete has a fake retirement. Well, I think this one's going to, I think he's going to come back. Yeah. They're going to figure out how to fix him. Yeah. I mean, Aaron Rodgers was just saying he was retiring to go host Jeopardy. Like, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah. They were like, these are the names like of people fighting for Alex Trebek's job. And it was what? like Aaron Rodgers. And I was like, Aaron Rod like what? It would be a pretty dope job, though. That would be a dope job. Dude, you're and then getting not destroying your body money? every day? You're getting Jeopardy money. <laughs> getting that Alex Trebek money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that Alex Trebek. <laughs> I don't think you get to walk into Alex Trebek money, though. No, you got to start at the bottom, work your way up. Yeah. You know, what? Well, well, okay. There we go. Oh, we're in on a triangle. Yeah, okay, like, we've got Elijah go. in on a triangle. Okay. He's looking to get that arm across. Oh, man. Oh, they're going up. Oh. And he gets the top. Oh, <laughs> that was a big win for Elijah Carlton. Nice. Good job, Elijah. That was amazing. Yes. That, I should say that moment was amazing. That was. <laughs> Let's make some noise one more time for that match, guys. So 37 minutes. <laughs> so here we go. I, I'm really proud though, like Elijah kept his composure, didn't uh, you know, allow the, the pace of the match to affect his strategy. In the past, I've seen Elijah, you know, kind of give in, as I, mm -hmm. I mentioned a, a little bit earlier. I've seen him kind of give in and allow positions, allow movements, allow things to happen. And you just can't do that to a grappler of Sam's caliber. If Sam gets past the guard and he gets on a neck or gets on an arm, it, you're going to get finished. Right. Well, we did see Elijah stand for a little while, try that out, sit back down. And I did see him, he looked a little frustrated at a point, but he was able to calm back down, get to his position, play his game. So yes, I really like to see this evolution of Elijah. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. 
Yeah, that's one of those where like that finish was a million dollar finish, but that match wasn't a million dollar match. No. Like, we just wanted that to be put in a highlight reel. <laughs> right. We just cut out the last yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, ten <laughs> seconds. Yeah. You're like, no, you had to you had to see the finish from that match, but don't go right. watch the match. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> But we're getting ready to go into our super fight, and we've got a young kid, Ethan Birmingham, who's 17 years old, and this guy is a beast. Brandon's really high on him, and anytime Brandon comes to me and he's like, hey, like, there's this guy, you know, he's killing it, he's a, you know, he's a, a blue belt, he's underneath, he trains with Bryce Mitchell, Bryce Mitchell becoming one of the biggest names in the UFC, everybody loves him, especially in the South for his camo rants. Like Reeboks, where's my camo? He finally wore him down, though. He yeah, got his camo he, he did. Well, it took Venom, you know. You had, they had to get uh, oh, the okay. new... <laughs> new sponsor. Yeah. Okay, Reebok was like, nah. We're yeah, dude. It. Reebok dropped the ball. I just can't believe Venom had UFC money, though. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know Venom did. Yeah, I didn't. I wouldn't have bought that stock, and I would have missed out on a lot of money. Kind of like Doge. <laughs> Doge was the venom you of missed the... Out yeah. On the Doge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. And who is Ethan but, Yeah, we got Ethan Birmingham, again, fighting out of Bryce Mitchell's camp. He's had a few MMA fights. He's undefeated as an MMA fighter. And he's coming in. He's going against the 10th Planet Jacksonville product. Uh, you know, a really talented purple belt, Manny. Manny, really good at the... Like, he's got really strong guard work. He likes playing uh, a lot of the 10th Planet system as well as some really slick leg locks. So I'll be interested to see how Ethan handles some of these unorthodox attacks he's about to see from, uh, you know, Manny, the 10th plan of Jacksonville, purple belt. Okay, so blue belt versus purple belt. Yeah, but it's one of those, like, man, we got this MMA fighter kid. Everybody's really high on him in the Southeast. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Jamie Houston, who runs the S uh, SFC promotion, one of the best fight promotions in the Southeast. He's like, this kid's going to be a star. Uh, yeah, I remember Brandon doing commentary for him, and he came home that night, and he was yeah. like, "This, remember this name. Yeah, um, Brandon just keeps mentioning this kid to me, keeps mentioning this kid to me. So, so this super fight is under a different rule set, though, right? So that is something like this rule set is EBI format. So max 10 minutes. If the match goes 10 minutes, we will get three EBI OT rounds. The OT rounds start in either the spider web, which is an arm locking position, or you get the seat belt from the back. Mm -hmm. Two minutes max ride time. So we're still, even with that match, this thing's still looking at a couple of hours, which yeah. is way quicker than the previous one. <laughs> yes, we were here all night. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so I've heard differing opinions about the there being three rounds of overtime because sometimes they'll go and just do one. Yeah. And sometimes they'll when go and do all three. There's a lot of matches. Sometimes they'll do one, especially if it doesn't have like championship, uh, you know, implications. Right. And but. like sometimes they'll just do like leading up to the finale, they'll do one round, one mm -hmm. round, one round, and then the finale they'll do three. Look, the biggest thing is how do we make jujitsu watchable, right? How do we make it exciting? How do we get fans to watch just like fans like hey i don't play baseball mm -hmm. but i watch baseball or i don't play golf but i watch golf hey i don't play or you know practice brazilian jiu-jitsu but i watch brazilian jiu-jitsu how do you do that and yeah you gotta make it exciting yes and people are gonna keep tinkering with the rules until we find a format I, that's cool about jiu-jitsu i mean are there any other sports that can like compete in a different role like baseball it's the rules are the rules you know When's the last time they changed the baseball? Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? We having fun? Okay, guys, we got a super match coming up right now. Now, this is going to be EBI rules, okay? For those of you guys that don't know how that works, it's going to be 10 minutes of submission only. And if nobody submits anybody, they're going to have rounds of EBI overtime rounds where each opponent gets to pick a position, either being the back or arm bar, spider web position. Um, our two competitors coming up, we've got Ethan Birmingham. <laughs> and he will be facing Manny Leverett. Make some noise, guys. So here we go, this is a 10 minute EBI match. 
We've got the purple belt, Manny out of 10th Planet Jacksonville going against the MMA fighter. Ooh, jumping guard pull. These guys are right into it. And I expect this to be a high-paced uh, high match. See, this is how I imagine what the qualifiers are going to look like. Yeah. <laughs> Manny doing a good training. job. Keeping his posture. You see Ethan trying to climb up, looking to underhook that leg. He's trying to win the posture battle here. Manny Man. keeping frames. Nice really nice frames. work by Manny. Ooh, Manny looking for that Gary Tonin. He's in on Ooh, that Gary Tonin. That. He's got that outside heel hook. He switches Ooh. to the butterfly grip. That's getting tight. And that ankle's taped up. He's in that power, and you see Ethan just not even making a face. He's like, I'm 17, dude. He's like, no, I don't need that foot. It's like, I'm young. <laughs> I'll heal later. <laughs> oh, and he pops a triangle. Oh, oh he's out, he's out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. He's back in on an outside heel hook, though. Both guys going for an outside. That was, that was awesome. That was exciting. <laughs> so we got Manny looking to pass. He's got an underhook. Oh, we see Manny switch. Oh, we see a bottom side arm triangle attempt from Ethan. This can be really dangerous. It's it one could. of Eddie Bravo's favorite moves. He lets go, switches. Nice okay. work. Nice weight, But that's Manny. a sneaky attack it right is. there. Manny had his weight nicely distributed. Nice. Right. Two minutes in. Ooh. Pass by. And, oh, a flying triangle attempt. Another guard jumping. And we see Manny back with this good posture. Ethan, though, underhooking. Underhooking that leg. Right hand's controlling the collar tie. He's looking Ooh. to come up to a high garden. This is the first time he's had posture control. Oh, uh -huh. he's a little rub guard, rubber guard of his own. Okay, that's, that's being Ooh. 17 as well, that knee. <laughs> really nice high guard work right there. So they're almost off the mat. And now we see Manny in the bottom of mount. He's looking to do that mermaid escape. What's, what's Ethan have at the top there? He's looking Is he going for, for a punch, punch choke? choke? Yeah. Really nice mermaid right there. So that mermaid escapes. Oh, man. And we see a little flying triangle attempt of, of his own by Manny. Yeah, we need about three more of these matches. Okay. I'm with you. pep talk from the commission. <laughs> oh, back in on an outside. Ethan does a good job, though, clearing the knee line immediately. Clearing that knee line, crucial. There's three ways you're going to look to escape those leg locks. And both guys just bringing it. He's looking for that esteema. Up, up, up. Oh, we see a knee compression here. I just, I don't know how much damage a knee compression to cause, like, can cause. Like, I've never really seen somebody get, like, injured from a knee compression. Mm. He's looking for an inside heel hook. Oh, that one's okay. deep. He's trying to spin out. He does. He gets the spin out. Both guys with leg attacks of their own. But if you're a betting man, you got to bet on the inside heel hook every single time. That inside heel hook is definitely the most efficient and damaging joint lock in jiu-jitsu. So we're five minutes in. This match is flying by.
Manny back in on an outside heel hook attempt. Never quite secures the position. He's back up passing. And Ethan's got a dangerous guard. Ooh, really nice footwork right there by Manny. He's got to be careful, though, of those pop triangle attempts. Oh, he jumps on the head. Okay. Can he? Oh. Ooh, nice escape <laughs> by Ethan. He saw Manny jump on the arm bar, but he recognized it. And turned that thumb down, escaped pretty easily. You see Ethan like, nah, bro, I'm the guard player. <laughs> Man, he's like, okay, come on. Oh, nice pass. Uh -huh. Okay, oh. 50-50, nice entry. Both guys looking for heel hooks. That was a good pop. I heard that. Nice. Nice inside heel hook. Yeah, I definitely heard that pop. Uh, like you said, he's 17. Hopefully it, uh, he'll be better in a couple yeah. of days. Yeah, Ethan just left his feet hanging a little bit too loosely. He just left his legs out there, and you can't do that with inside heel hooks. <laughs> All right, guys, let's give a round of applause one more time for that exciting match. Uh, this is the part of the evening, guys, where it's an intermission, so it's a great time to you know, use the bathroom or take a break. Um, have a nice laugh. Uh, <laughs> so, have at thee. So, really good super fight match. Really sets the stage and brings the energy back for this final. And like I said, everybody was predicting. Oh. Are we? Keeping it with Jones, Lonnie Jones Parker. Available now, Castle Spotify, and all of the podcasts. Physical therapy and balance. Oh, and Jones Parker is going to be You'll be better at actually talking to Lonnie. <laughs> right. Well, what's up, Lonnie Please, Jones? Oh, no, no, no. No, this mic's all yours. 
All right, so Lonnie Jones, why don't you tell the people about your podcast and about your book, um, you know, dealing with life through the eyes of grappling. Okay, so several years ago, I got the opportunity to uh, write a book called Grappling with Life, Controlling Your Inside Space. And one of the things I learned from training with you guys, uh, you and uh, Brandon and Lindsay, was that your inside space is, is very valuable and very vulnerable. And so this book has 10 principles that are based in uh, techniques that I believe to be valid in jiu-jitsu that talk about controlling your inside space. And your podcast has you know, really been uh, very insightful for myself, and I know there's quite a few people that really listen to it every time you come out with an episode. What, uh, you know, why should people uh, kind of look for your podcast, and kind of what do you talk about in keeping up with the Joneses? Okay, the... Uh, the book was overtly done to not be very religious, but the, the podcast is based on a series of articles I used to write for a church bulletin, and it was always called Keeping Up With Jones, and so I found all those old articles, and just, uh, and, and my way of breaking down, in front, even when the guys came to the ropes course, it's facts, facts lead to concepts, concepts lead to applications. And those are just, those, most of those articles are 64 lines. That's all the, all the space they gave me in, in the bulletin. And so I tell a story about life and make those applications. And a lot of times, you know, there'll be a, a, a spiritual principle or a, a scripture involved in that. And it's, it's more religious than the Grappling with Life book. But it's still, you know, truth is truth. Whether you buy into a, a, that Christian worldview or not, there's some truth there. And I think it has some educational plus entertainment value to it. And some of, uh, I would say a lot of the fans of the PGF, some of their favorite parts of it were when you were working with the group of guys. What, uh, well first, where did you take them? Like what were you taking them through? Uh, what were the people kind of watching, um, you know? Okay, we have an experiential education center. Uh, most people call that a ropes course. We call it a challenge course. And it's a specific set of elements uh, we played initiative games, and then we played with the low elements, and then we have some high elements. And they're, they're designed to deal with problem solving, leadership, communication, and conflict resolution. That's kind of our bread and butter. Uh, this year, I worked with the PGF. I worked with a crane company. I'm going to do a little thing with FedEx uh, this month. And it's all based in, here's an experience, here's a problem you had to solve, and then facts, concepts, applications. Uh, the, the course that we were on is at Wellstone Behavioral. Uh, it used to be the Madison County Mental Health Center. And they invited my company several years ago to scout their property, see if they could put a ropes course on it. And uh, they liked our design and just asked us to build it and move there. So we've been there since 07. So what surprised you about working with the PGF guys? What were kind of their strengths and weaknesses, especially when you talk about dudes that just really didn't know each other before this week that came in as, you know, individuals trying to win this grand prize? The, the biggest thing was their appetite. We, we catered the meal, and uh, <laughs> I was thinking I'll eat leftovers this week, and uh, I had uh, four ounces of barbecue and one square of blueberry pie left. <laughs> it was amazing what... Uh, 16 225 pound athletes can eat uh, the impressive part was their adaptability uh, in the ropes course or challenge course industry we talk about think outside the box well these guys are jujitsu guys so they've already gone outside traditional grappling traditional uh, martial arts to do Brazilian jiu-jitsu and so their ability to adapt to a changing environment and to really validate each other's experiences. There was no leader. There was no he who is loudest is right. All those guys respected each other as athletes. And I don't see that in companies where people have been working together for 15 years. Mm. Really impressive group of young athletes. I was really just super impressed with their character, not to mention their athleticism. I thought it was a cool part when you were saying that um, through one of the challenges, they actually did better when they closed their eyes. Do you think that that's um, like maybe specific to jujitsu or martial arts or, you know, why do you think that was? Most of the time your, your sight is connected to your balance. 
and these guys inherent, is it Kazushi? You talk mm -hmm. about breaking Kazushi. up somebody's balance. We used to call it corrupting your balance. And we would talk about things that corrupted your balance. And oftentimes a lack of vision will corrupt your balance. Well, I didn't get to make that point with these guys. They closed their eyes and were almost inner focused and had more balance than they did with their eyes open. And I think, yeah, a direct result of them being martial artists. So you and your lovely wife have become big fans of the PGF. What has drawn you to the PGF and who's your favorite competitor? Oh man, uh, Jackie loves sports of any kind. She's a better athlete than I am. And in our early dating years, she said the only time she ever saw me look graceful was wrestling. <laughs> and uh, there's a story about the front four of her football team uh, jumping on me in her front yard. And uh, I thought I was just super cool and handled them. She called me a barbarian and went in the house. But, uh, you know, she just likes anything that, is, that has a science and a performance base to it. Mm. She's, she, her master's degree is in kinesiology. Mm. And so she just loves the, the simple elegance of jujitsu. Man, my favorite fighter, I really, really like uh, Sam Barbosa. Okay. I just like his approach to the world. I uh, didn't know anything about Hunter Colvin. And I, I like what I've seen from him. Uh, of course, I'm friends with Evan Stapler. I'm friends with Joe Kai. I'm friends with Primo. And uh, a lot of those guys, I just like to watch them because, you know, how cool is it to sit at home and go, hey, that guy's on TV and I've rolled with him. Now, he murdered me, but I rolled with him. <laughs> uh, and then I really like Elijah because even though he's got this I'm the bad guy reputation, this is business. He approaches stuff like uh, George St. Pierre does. He walks in, says, okay, I'm here to do a job. My ego is not involved. Call me what you want to and get you some of that. And so I really like his approach as well. So being a big fan, you've watched these guys all season. You saw the Hunter versus Elijah match. Do you have a prediction? Who's going to win this final match, Hunter or Elijah? I think the edge goes to Hunter because he doesn't have as much time on the mat tonight. I think maybe a fatigue factor comes in. But uh, I think Elijah's one of those guys that, you know, fool me once, shame on me, fool me, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. I think he'll be ready. Uh, you know, you watched him uh, when Sam tried to look like a, a, some kind of a flying entry. Uh, he was already defending that. And so, I, you know, that's, I wouldn't bet money on either of these guys. That, that's a toss-up, and it's going to be who makes a mistake first. Yeah, I completely agree. It definitely is going to be a really good matchup. I think either guy could walk away here as the, the season two champion. Now, what's crazy is, is Elijah's already the season one champion. We're getting ready to crown a new season two champion now that Sam Barboza lost. So it would be pretty crazy if Elijah happened to become the two-time champ, especially going into season three at 170. Yeah, I think, he's, I think it's in his nature to be dominant. And now that you've got a no time limit, he's allowed not to be rushed, not to have to make quick decisions. Like I say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet against him. And really, one of the last things I want to ask you is just about competition mindset, because you're a guy that you know has worked in the psychology field forever, and you've worked with different, so many different types of people and different types of possessions, uh, professions. But we're talking about high performance and high level athletes. What's one piece of advice that you could give to maybe a young competitor or somebody that's wanting to get to that level? Uh, what's one big thing they need to have, uh, you know, when it comes to mindset? Hard is not bad. Hard is good. And, you know, learn to deal with adversity. And uh, if you, and, and that's part of this, you know, you start in jujitsu and you're the, the, the worst guy in the room and you deal with getting crushed and, and crushed forever and learning to deal with adversity it, that's the difference between a true champion and everybody else is that I can get in a tough situation not panic not give up not tap to pressure and so I think the biggest thing that separates these guys from other athletes is the constant having to deal with and make changes in adversity and a guy gets a dominant position on you these guys quit worrying about oh what can he do and they start analyzing their own assets, what can I do? Mm. Uh, in a fight, you control two things. What you can do, how fast you can do it. That's from Tiger McGee, who wrote the book, uh, The Book of Two Guns. 
Yeah. Very cool. All okay. right, everyone, take your seats. The finals well, match will Lonnie, begin in two minutes. It, uh, was really uh, nice. Start finding your you way to your seat you for the, the final match of PGF Season Two. Uh, you know, uh, tune in to everything Brandon puts out. Join their podcast. Join the uh, Jedi Archive Academy and uh, learn some techniques. If you can't come train in person, being trained by him uh, vicariously is very, very valuable. And then uh, tune in to Keeping Up With Jones, the Lonnie Jones podcast adventure. Amen. Uh, Amazon.com, Grappling With Life, uh, Controlling Your Inside Space. Thank you, guys. Let's yeah. So there it is, Lonnie Jones, one of my favorite people uh, that I've been really fortunate to meet through grappling. And he's, he's had a very, very positive impact on my life. So definitely check out his podcast. There's just gold nuggets, especially when it comes to mindset. You want to improve your mindset, whether it's performance, whether it's relationship based, whatever you want to, what area, uh, whatever area in life you want to improve upon, Lonnie can definitely provide some wisdom. But Lindsay. We're getting ready to crown season two's champion. What's been your favorite moment so far in season two? We're talking about regular season, tournament, anything. What has been your favorite moment? Um, I don't know if it's just a moment or if it's just uh, the situation of season two. I, I think that our uh, production has gone up exponentially. Just if you saw season one and now you're looking at season two, you can tell that we've done amazing improvements and it's going to keep improving into season three. Our competition level has improved and it's going to continue to improve with the impl like Im implementing the uh, qualifiers. So yes, I, I think my favorite thing about season two is just how much we have improved and how much effort we've put into it and how much you guys have um, supported us. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment we've been waiting for. We're gonna crown our season two PGF champion. First, we have our season two regular season points winner, Hunter Colvin. Next to the stage, we have the bad guy, season one champion, Elijah Carlton! And we're off on our way to crown season two's true champion. We got Hunter Colvin on top. We see Elijah Poolguard. And man, if you saw the, the finale um, of the regular season, these two guys matched up in the last match. And it was a crazy match. We saw Hunter get that patented rolling Kimura and finish from the top side Kimura. And man, really, really, really crucial to note that you know, you see, you're gonna see Elijah, I think, really watch out for that rolling Kimura. It's gotta be on his mind. Hunter looking to win an inside space, tries an M1 pass. And a completely different strategy from Sam Barbosa. You know, Sam was keeping his distance on the outside. Hunter's like, no, 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 I'm gonna go ahead and get inside pressure pressure on mm, you see a little throw post right there but oh really nice work floating hunter just floats so well <laughs> you see a little smile right there from elijah their last match got a little chippy you saw you know hunter really doing some aggressive collar ties and man hunter just knows how to win he is a competitor to the truest sense he wants that top spot So a minute 35 in. So you see that Elijah, well, had both butterfly hooks in, but Hunter not too concerned with having Elijah have one hook inside. He's able to float so well. Yeah, and we've seen uh, two M1 attempts. Elijah's guard so relaxed. It just allows those knees to come back to his chest. Ooh, we see a nice body lock here. 
the body lock pass has really become a staple in no gi jujitsu. You're seeing a lot of top level guys really dominate with the body lock and Hunter has to give it up though. Nice work by Elijah. Hunter steps over. Another M1 attempt. Nice hook. Yeah, those, oh, when we see the diving he's in on the, oh, nice inversion. He's so quick with that rolling Kimura attempt. Didn't quite get his hands locked together, but he just sees it, man. There was very little space for that rolling attempt, and he almost pulled it off. Nice work by Elijah, though. Nice pass, nice pass. All right. and he uses that rolling Kimura to pass the guard. Elijah now in bottom side control. But really good job. I mean, Elijah's definitely at least won those first two rolling Kimura uh, battle attempts. But now he's got a shin across the face. Three and a half minutes. And neither guy really needs to rush, you know. Uh, you can see um, Hunter looking to pick off a wrist right here, but he's just using that shin and knee to make Elijah uncomfortable. This is the thing, Elijah can kind of just hunker down defensively because he doesn't have to escape. No points have been scored. This match isn't gonna end because, you know, Hunter passed the guard and a time limit expired. He's gonna have to get the submission, so. Elijah needs to stay disciplined. He needs to be wary of his arms because at any moment, uh, excuse me, Hunter can, can uh, grab that Kimura grip. Hunter doing a good job putting pressure on the hips uh, so that Elijah can't invert. Yeah, and he really likes this north-south position because now he's gonna have access to either side Kimura. Blocking any knees from coming back inside. So that so that Elijah can re-establish a guard. Yeah, controlling that waistline, you know, not allowing Elijah to get those inversions. Because when Elijah's, uh, Elijah's legs are in the way, I mean, he's just so dangerous. He's got mm. the triangle attempts. He can go underneath for the legs. Five minutes. Hunter so heavy. Yeah, Hunter heavy with the hips. Just thinking about being that heavy. elbow. <laughs> yeah, he wants to get underneath that elbow. Either one. Yeah. So, oh, nice bump right there. Really nice pressure. Elijah did a good job inverting, but and Hunter did a great job using his head to stop that. Oh, does he have an arm? Oh, okay. You see how his head's being Our used pressure. as a weapon right there? Yeah. So Elijah's out back playing guard. Nice work by both guys, but i really impressed by Hunter's top pressure. And 6.15 on the clock. So a little throat post. Elijah elevates, but man, Hunter just so good at floating over the hooks, you know? So even when Elijah gets the hooks, it's really just working Elijah's legs. He's using mm. muscle right there, but not really getting anywhere, so. All that weight's still on the hooks. Yeah, yeah. The, the float passing can be really difficult to deal with, but it takes a long time to learn. Nice. 
seven minutes in. Elijah in the butterfly guard. You just always have to be careful, though, of your elbows. They're trying to pass that knee, trying to push it through. Oh, nice, nice arm drag attempt right there. Hunter posting just a little bit too much. Elijah, nice, nice arm drag attempt, but I mean, it just shows you how high level Hunter is. He can just recover from, you know, he made a little mistake. Now he's in on the double underpass. Oh, Elijah's in. But Hunter immediately postures and he's out. Nice. Chu Chitsu from both guys. Awesome. Yeah, this is a great finals match. Heavy those hips are from Hunter. Mm -hmm. You see Elijah trying to dig underneath with that right arm, and Hunter just sprawls those hips out. Probably you know, it just probably feels like he weighs 300 pounds there as you're trying to lift and elevate. Elijah's in on a leg. Oh, Hunter turns it into a back taking opportunity. Oh, what a back take nice. off the leg lock. Body triangle. And he gets the tap. Nice. And All Hunter right. Colvin is season two champion. Make some noise one more time for your champion! Hey, I just wanted to thank you guys for coming out tonight. Thank you for supporting jujitsu. Thank you, Brandon, for putting on this amazing event. Um, thank you, God, for allowing me to do this and, you know, train on the daily. Thank you to my wonderful wife for, you know, putting up with my crab, honestly, and, like, um, just all my teammates. But the reason I got the mic is um, one of the PGF competitors, he's in the hospital right now, and he's um, dealing with some heart issues. It's uh, Zach Edwards. His Instagram is backcountryleglocks10p. I'm gonna be donating a portion of my winnings to his GoFundMe. I encourage you guys to do the same, even if everyone just throws in like $10, you know, I think we can make a big difference. And you know, that's what's great about the Jiu-Jitsu community. It's not competing, it's not any of that. It's bigger than all of us. Thank you guys, God bless. And there we have it, guys. Season two wrapped up. We have a true season two champion. Hunter Colvin takes the back of Elijah Carlton, gets the finish. <sighs> what more can you say about Hunter <sighs> Colvin? That was beautiful. Class act. Just thanks, family. Thanks, jujitsu. And then shouts out Zach Edwards. And it would be just amazing if we all could go and just give a little something to Zach Edwards. He definitely is Absolutely. in need of it right now. But Absolutely. thank you guys for coming out, all you guys that tuned in. Thank you so, so much. Season three is coming, guys, and it's going to be bigger and better than ever. All right. We'll see you guys back at season three. Hey, dude, congrats on your yeah, victory, you. brother. Seriously. I don't think so. I Yo, what's up, yeah, Ivy? How you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm glad y'all came. Hey, how are you? Good to see ya.
Thanks, man. Huge congrats, man. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. That's so cool. Tuesday. Sean came oh, out. Yeah. Yeah. Coach, yeah. man, that's just so cool. I finally got in touch with him this past Tuesday. Yeah, he was just a good friend like, as well. Oh, oh Matt, nice to meet you, brother. Very nice to meet you. You enjoy the show? Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah, dude, you should try some jujitsu, dude, for sure. Yeah, we'll just wait till you come back, and then, yeah, we'll take care of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, definitely do that. No, seriously. Nice to see you, brother. Yeah, I'm going to go down there Tuesday, and then... Oh, yes, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Yeah. So 11 a.m. is donation based. Yeah. 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 Yeah.